I'm Commander Shepard, and the Unnamed Games Podcast is my favorite podcast on the Citadel. Shepard out. Hello, people of the internet, and welcome to our E3 special. Um, so, we've had E3 this week. Uh, we've all watched it, we've all enjoyed it, and we want to share our thoughts. So, with me, you're very, very lucky today, I have, once again, all four of us. Hello, boys. Oh, it's good to Whoa! see you. <laughs> cool. Right, how are you doing, Phil? You well? Good, thank you, mate. I'm very good doing some jazz hands there. It seemed like the appropriate thing to do. It was nice. I liked it. Mr. Ratley, how are you, sir? Oh, you know, I'm all right. Don't know good, why good, I good. don't know why I went to an accent there at that moment, you know, but I'm all right, yeah. E by gum. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and unfortunately, well, unfortunately, we don't have Alan again this week, but we do have Thunderlips McQueen. How are you, sir? Well, I'll tell you, mate, I am recovering after what was a very hedonistic weekend uh, around your <laughs> wet neck of the woods. Uh, lots of debauch uh, antics were had, and it was a blooming good time, and I really enjoyed myself. I've had to yeah. come Huzzah! back home for a rest. Indeed. And and that's and the thing. thing, by most people's standards, it was a pretty bog standard weekend. But Alan, after having a heart attack, got to eat some dirty food, didn't you? And it was lovely, like a fry, a fry up. Fry up. <laughs> it was a fry up. It was blooming lovely. I'm not gonna lie. Bacon. I mean, I'm, I'm also not going to lie. We did have nine 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 on speed dial under the table, just in case. <laughs> a shout out to the Stag Cafe up Elmswell Way. Superb mm -hmm. breakfast, quality meat. Lovely yeah, job. quality stuff. Quality stuff. <laughs> quality meat. Cool. <laughs> There's a recommendation <laughs> right there. Quality meat. <laughs> well, the, technically, the butchers behind it has the quality meat, but they cook it to perfection. So you know, it's a yeah. double. Well, there you win. go. I'm so stuff. glad you guys cleared that up for everybody. <laughs> well done. I'm yeah. sure people would have really, really struggled with that. Yeah. Well, now, well, no, they don't it's just have to go to the stack. Right. They can just go to the butchers. <laughs> oh, right. Well, that'll get more customers. Well done, Phil. You we lot, sure you time to shut up, and we're going right. to get on with the show. Right. So... <laughs> Our plan is we've all got some highlights from the show. We're not going to go through everything because the show's just too big. There's too much. We'd be here for hours and hours and hours. So we've all picked some highlights out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the room and we're going to have a conversation about each of it, everyone's highlights. So we're going to do a bit of a carousel all the way around um, and then see where we go from there. So uh, I'm going to start off with... Thunderlips McQueen because he's taking a sip of his coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you sir are a fill <laughs> right the first game i'm going to talk about is it, it, let's just go straight in let's go for the big one okay let's okay. go for starfield okay starfield not so, heard of this one yeah no, it's, it's a small game a uh, small studio um i'm surprised they included it in there to be honest no mm. this is bethesda obviously and i think the whole microsoft presentation was a kind of you know bethesda and and xbox are big buddies and we're working together type affair anyway so um, so we had the Starfield. I'd say it was a teaser trailer, to be honest. Um, I, I, I know that we've talked about this already, Craig, but, you know, I watched it on the night. And, yeah, I was a little excited because I'm super excited for the game, being a massive Bethesda Games, you know, fan. Um, but I was slightly underwhelmed by the, by the actual presentation itself. I thought I wanted to, them to at least give me some tangible information. It was, in, it was, it was in, a generous word. You yeah, that. yeah, very yeah. generous. I mean, I mean, it was it was using the Creation Two engine, so they, they said that it was in-game footage. But let's not kid ourselves; that's not what the game's gonna look like. Maybe it will. Maybe I'm wrong. We are talking about next-gen consoles, which it is exclusive to. So there is a possibility it might look that gorgeous. But you know, I'm, I was hoping for some more information more than anything else, and to see more of the world. It was more of a, oh, we've got this great game idea, and this is our great game idea, but we're not actually going to show you really the game so i was a little bit disappointed but still the excitement was still there there was like another um there was a couple more bits that kind of accompanied it which i think should have and i think you said the same thing chris should have been um included mm. in the presentation there was uh, an interview with todd howard which was included in uh, i believe the american telegraph magazine um, and they released it early before e3 and there was another video which i've actually put into our um our discord channel so if you want to if you don't know what that video is then please Please join our discord i'm sure craig will put the details up um and then you can get that link and uh, also chat with us lovely guys but yeah i mean that, that those two other sources 
had some fantastic information about Starfield that really made me excited. So, and I suppose you could say, you know, off the back of not getting it from the E3 presentation, I went and saw this other stuff. So it wasn't, a you know, like complete loss. And all of it together makes me very, very excited. I mean, we are getting a little bit more information. We are getting stuff about, you know, basically, in a nutshell, Todd Howard said it himself, it's Skyrim in space. Now, I don't think that really covers what it is. But at least we know what we're going to be expecting. They're not just going to produce. They're not. They're not bringing out Star Citizen. Yeah, they're, they're making <laughs> Skyrim in space. But mm. I'm sure they'll be pushing the boundaries of what they want to do because I've heard a lot of reports coming from um, not just the Todd Howard interview, but other things about them basically saying that they want to make a hardcore role-playing game. So they've let that slip a bit over like the the past few years with like the Elder Scrolls and Fallout. The RPG element has kind of fallen off a little bit. It's there but it's not what you'd call hardcore. And for Starfield, they're saying we want to go back in and we have this hardcore role-playing game. So I'm very excited at this point about the prospect of the game um, and about some of those sort of images that we saw, which is concept art and stuff like that. Um, and I'm very doubtful we'll probably see any gameplay this year, knowing what Bethesda is like. Probably won't see anything until E3 next year. Because if we're talking about a release date, yes, we got one, 11th of November next year, lovely. And Todd Howard is adamant that it will be the release date. And I saw another content creator, and I want, I'm not stealing from it, I'm just going to say what he said, which is Mr. Matty Plays. And he basically said, oh, I totally believe you, Todd Howard, because Bethesda releases games if they're finished or not. Yeah. <laughs> 76. So, so when, when Todd Howard says it's coming out on the 11th, the 11th, he means it. Yeah. I mean, it, it probably won't work, but he, he means it. So, uh, Come rain know, or op shine. <laughs> optimistically, with the extra finances and the backing of Microsoft, there won't be the sort of issues we've seen. I keep my fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. But I love, you know, overall, with the presentation we had at the, uh, the Xbox presentation and the additional information, I finished the weekend quite happy chappy with the extra information I've had uh, and reasonably excited about it. Um, but I now I've now got a long wait probably to start seeing additional stuff. Mm. I think they're probably going to drip feed us a little bit as we go through. Mm. Uh, we'll get little bits and bobs, but I think you're probably right. We'll probably have to wait a little while before we get actual kind of a gameplay trailer, as in somebody yeah. actually playing the game and seeing yeah, how the yeah, quests work and stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was really, yeah, I was, I was blown away by the Creation Engine 2. They've really upped their game. I mean, you could it see it was really still the Creation Engine. Um, and obviously, that, I mean, that was alpha in-game footage um mm. so which was fantastic so you could really get a feel for what it is and and sort of I, i've seen people sort of saying no nah, no nah, that was a cg trailer which yeah suppose, i've seen that yeah you it's, know, that's all credit that shows how good the engine yeah, is exactly bring that and a cg just like cutscene. Yeah. then that says how high how quality it was and it was yeah. it was ridiculous yeah. high quality my, and it's my one of these games that we're getting that. where it's sorry right. it's one of these games we're getting where it's um uh, it, it's a next gen only game so this is the start yeah. of what yeah. the new generations can yeah. deliver not yeah. being held back by the previous generation <laughs> sorry go on rattley <laughs> no, I'm just saying, my only concern whenever i see in engine footage is it wasn't in, in engine, engine. Footage. it was no it's alpha in, in game, game footage yeah yeah, yeah so but it's using but, the engine yeah. but yeah but yeah but that's in it's the same as in engine isn't it you know an alpha yeah. in game in game is the same as in engine they're just saying this is rendered in the engine you know, when the when the when the game yeah. comes along, there's always more to do. So the engine has to be scaled back sometimes. I'm not saying it's gonna happen and I hope it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And it did look very, very pretty. I was very impressed with it. Considering well, I normally think we have, I'll be honest with you, I normally think because... Bethesda games look like arse. So yeah, but I was really I was really impressed with it. Yeah. As we've said, with the next generation, we haven't seen any titles yet. Yes. So yeah. we don't really know what is possible if it's exclusive. We've seen, mm. you know, a couple of minor titles, but nothing on this scale with this amount of money behind it. So it, you never know. It's just a question of waiting for that footage to start appearing and then we can start making a judgment. Yeah, call yeah. I'm looking for I hope it maintains it. I hope it maintains it. Me too. Mm. Phil, oh, Phil. Phil's got his hands up. Well, you know, I didn't want to interrupt. Um, they did a good job of polishing it. I'll be honest with you. Just to get in there because you know my feelings on Bethesda game engines. Let's be honest, though. I mean, it looked good, but you can make Skyrim look that good. So I'm, I'm going to reserve my judgment. I think it's going to be like any other Bethesda game. You're going to sit in your spaceship. Your spaceship's going to take off, and your little dude's going to be sat there in his chair, still on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> now I, I'm cautiously optimistic. Or I think he's going to take off and he's going to shoot off in his seat, and the ship will remain behind. We've got a la Assassin's Creed style and the creepy cart. Well, horse we've people. still got <laughs> a very long time to have yeah. a lot more quips at Bethesda and uh, previous yeah, experiences. If it doesn't there, do that, but... it's not a Bethesda game, and people will be upset. <laughs> I think they'll manage. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. So, so it did hype the excitement up a bit for me. Of the actual presentation, I was kind of like, "Oh, was that it?" I was just hoping for some more. But mm. overall, over the weekend and the other leaks and stuff like that, I think you know I've come away a happy man. So, I've one yeah. more thing to say about that. I'm, I'm very mm. sad because no space Top Gun. It's been confirmed that no Tom it's, Cruise, yeah, which means it's, no space it's, Top Gun. Yeah, it's, it's well, you. It's you and you only that's sad about that. <laughs> no, me. You know? And one person who I apologise for. Cypher 1987, I think it is. Me and Cypher 19, yeah. Sorry, bro. Todd Howard didn't say no. He said no as far as I'm aware to this point. Doesn't mean there aren't negotiations with Tom Cruise. It, mm. I wouldn't count it out just yet. Space Top Gun. Space Top Gun. Why? Why would you bring this back up? With... Um, You've got to keep him happy. He just you gets do realise that uh, Todd Howard was talking about it being like a hand solo simulator. Yeah. Surely that's good enough for you. Yeah. I th- yeah but that's Harrison old, Ford's yeah. getting a bit old now, bro. Oh. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Let's move on. There's no, there's no talking sense into that boy. I tell you. (laughs) Yeah, let's move on. (laughs) Right, um, over to Mister Ratster tweets this time. So, what is your first game, (laughs) Amadou? Well, if you need a bit of time reeling after that. Yeah, I just, I just, I just, I'm still trying to, you know, take it, take it in. Right. Anyway, let's let's crack on. So, I'm actually going to go. I think it was the second game they showed in the showcase as well from the Xbox showcase was Stalker Two. Um, yeah, yeah, and and uh, I mean, I was kind of I didn't play Stalker One. I didn't know much about it when it popped at the. I think it was E three last year, wasn't it? I was like, okay, cool, I guess. Um, you know, and then I did a little bit of homework, and then I saw this trailer, and I just kind of went, "Come again? That's <laughs> that's a bit pretty, isn't it? That's a bit cool." And um, and yeah, that, I thought well. I thought the whole way they did that for an indie title as well. Bear in mind, this is an indie title, small studio. And big, some of the facial animation was superb, I thought, where that guy was talking on the rooftop with that other guy, and he had that close-up of his face, and he was the, the, the mm. way facial structures were moving, I thought was really good. Um, some of the lighting in it, oh my god, like you know, there was that great shot where he was moving through the building with some kind of gun which had all the kind of moving bits on the front of it. Yeah. And uh mm. and the, the lightning strikes outside and the, the the way the illumination happened, obviously ray traced illumination, mm. and then that lightning going up that that structure in the background. I was just like, huh? I, I like the atmosphere looked great. A little bit of me was like, this looks well cool. Then a little bit was like, I'm going to be scared a lot, aren't I? I'm just going to spend my <laughs> whole time not wanting to turn the next corner because there's going to be something scary around there. But I thought it looked that game cool. that game fits squarely into my code brown Ooh, comment. Ah! Just had an explosion there. Just right, I lost a light. Carry, carry on. <laughs> I was like, Craig died. <laughs> Maybe Craig's having the code brown moment right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, Craig was like, what? Uh, so um, yeah, that was uh, yeah, so that was uh, exactly what what I'll be like in Stalker. Is things will fall over and I'll just be like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> that'll be the end of it. Ah! I want to jump back down to. I love the presentation of that. I love that bit where they're mm. sitting around the fire, just yeah, having that, a conversation. Yeah, like you said, that was so great. And then it was almost like flashbacks into it as what had happened. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was, it was the obviously... way he said, you know, I'll take this over this, and like you talked about, was it the um, anomalies? And then he showed that little yeah. thing run into it and just explode. I was like, yep, screw that. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope. <laughs> really, really weighted impact. I mean, obviously, this game is going to get heavily compared to Metro. Weight well, off that vein, just, you isn't know, because yeah. it's Russian it's within that vein. Mm. Well, it's, it's, it's that, it's that yeah. no HUD or low HUD Russian you know, nuclear winter thing. There's another one like it as well. Uh, Tarkov is very much the same vein as yeah, well. Yeah, Escape from Tarkov, yeah. Yeah, there's like there's like, th- yeah, there's like, yeah, there's like, yeah. There's like three, three, three or four games all in this kind of sort of thing. Um, and I think Metro, from what I can gather, is more narrative-driven than Stalker is. Like, it's much more point A to point B narrative-driven. Stalker's still got yeah, story, with, with but it's a bit more, a bit more open-world exploration-y. I, I think, know, I think, last, I think Metro went Metro that way. Exodus yeah, was Metro went more that way, didn't an it? Open yeah. area. Yeah. yeah, you traveled. To I, I, I must admit, I haven't played that one, and, and oh. yeah, that was the one they changed the format a little bit, wasn't it? Yeah. And expanded mm-hmm. it out. So I think, stunning yeah, with the I think, I think, yeah. Again, I want to see. I want. I do want to play that updated one, but yeah, the um, I think that's where Stalker is probably going to be something a bit like that. But I thought some of that, that uh, you know, that like the tone and the mood set in that game looked great. 
I loved it. It was just a, a, one throwaway scene I thought was amazing was where the guy was dancing and uh, and like it was the way that that whole scene was lit and it looked really real. And then like as he moved around the room, like floorboards would lift up because they weren't quite nailed down mm. and stuff. And I was like, that attention to detail. I was I was just yeah. yep. That for me was it was a real like that was the first thing that really made me go oh wow mm. oh oh wow you know this looks like a, a new title you know like something something we you know we haven't been able to achieve yet so yeah. I was really impressed with that really impressed. With we that. watched it when we watched it on the stream initially. Obviously the stream bandwidth is really low and mm. you can't really grasp it. I was like mm, that looks like it's going to be nice. So what I did is initially I, I go away and watch it on YouTube and I go oh that looks really good. And if something has a potential to look utterly amazing i download the 4k video put it onto a hard drive and then run it straight into my tv so I can yeah get a, an uncompressed and we did that with nice. uh, when alan was down we did that with yeah. the stalker and one of the things the the first shot we first see him with the ak-47 stand next to a brick wall mm. the resolution of the textures was it, it's a fo almost yeah. photo like top top end the wall just looked i mean absolutely well, there stunning was that point, that, that trailer, and I thought the only thing that really looked ever so slightly janky in that was the way he screwed on the the the, the silencer to the AK. But other than that, that guy, that that whole shot just looked so good. And when the, mm. when with the ray tracing, the way that the gun was lighting up from the from the muzzle flare and that, and, and it just it just ah, oh, that was so good, like yeah. top draw, really good. I've got, had to talk, guys. That 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 made me sit, sit back and go, you know what? That was kind of in the background of my of my sort of radar. And now it's right up in front, and I went. Mm. That looks like a game I want to play, you know. Uh, and again, if memory serves, I believe that's a, a Game Pass title. Yes, so, day one. You know, this is the beauty of this, right? So we've got Starfield mm. on Game Pass day one. We've got Stalker on Game Pass day one. So I don't need to. So 28th of April next year, I can download Stalker two, and I can get cracking with that. All yeah, for so the just, cost of my Game Pass subscription. Just did a quick of the old google search so stalker is going to be running on the unreal engine and as from our presentation that we watched unreal 4 stuff will move into unreal 5. Ooh. so whether that is running i'm guessing that's running on top end unreal 4 but whether they will slide that into unreal 5 because you can use those um those what they yeah, call yeah, yeah. film quality assets in there the super yeah. high res textures and then the, the engine just downscales it so you know that's that's the kind of I mean, tools that make these indie studio is able to develop at that level so that's really exciting I mean, whatever, whichever way you look at it whatever they've done so far if that's in unreal engine 4 they've nailed it to this point already so if they can go into unreal engine 5 enhance it mm. how that's going to be something else isn't it you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. or even if it just looks just as good just runs better yeah know, and, uh, like, yeah genuinely like yeah. at this point if it just took if it was just that i'd be happy it looked amazing anyway mm. so great yeah, I'm, I'm sold on that Cool. Wicked. Right. Next around the table, we're going to go to Mr. Phil. What oh. is your first pick, my friend? Confuse me. You're going in a Z. Oh, so okay. I'm going to go last. <laughs> okay. I, I want to build up to my final game. Okay. Which, you know, I'm sure people will be able to guess what that is. So I'm going to start with Tiny <laughs> Tina's Wonderland. Ah. Because I really love Borderlands 2, and I love the pre-sequel. Borderlands 3, not quite so much, but it's still a good game. But I'm very excited for this because, in particular, I loved the Tiny Tina DLC from Borderlands 2 that was like Dungeons and Dragons, but not. And it copyright, was... copyright. <laughs> yeah, copyright TM. Can't get paid on this video now, I've said that. Um, so, yeah, so I've obviously, uh, I've obviously watched the video on this. We all watched the video. I love the humor in Borderlands. I think Tiny Tina is such an insanely brilliant character. Um, just to confirm, this is a standalone game. Um, there is not actually that much information available about it, believe it or not. I did multiple web searches trying to find sort of more information that I could. And the bits I've sort of gleaned from it is it's an early 2022 release. So not too far away. Um, it's going to be guns and magic, but no grenades. Specifically mention no grenades. So none of the crazy healing grenades and the super grenades and... That'll Long probably be your magic grenades. replacing the grenades, won't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's probably, yeah. And they said, obviously, the magic is going to more than make up for it. So I'm very interested to see how absolutely mental the magic will be with the gearbox spin on it. Um, the protagonist that you get to play is called the Dragon Lord. Um, but we don't really know why or what he's doing or if there's any reason. We just know he's called the Dragon Lord. Lord he's over fight. dragons, obviously. Well, he's going to fight dragons, wyverns, skeletons, reanimated skeletons, might I add, and goblins. I just must say that it wouldn't be nearly as much fun if they weren't reanimated. Would yeah, it? it's just just <laughs> propped up on just, like a broomstick or something on the floor, like that. 
Who's that? Oh, that's Bob. Oh. He died like 20 years ago. We just keep him I'll around. Fight him. Keep him. <laughs> yeah. well, or he's just there. He fights skeletons. Yeah. They've just got flesh surrounding them. They're just called people. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's... it's not as exciting if you say that, is it? We all fight people. Um, yeah. So he, that's... He's, he's on your hobbies. Just go around fighting people. You, come here. I want to fight. <laughs> he's a rough one, that Phil. <laughs> He's a wrong and more likely, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of all the information I could glean from it. Um, apparently, there's going to be a lot of character customization because Borderlands has been traditionally very kind of change the head, change the color palette. That's about it. I suppose there's going to be a lot more character customization on this, which I think is really interesting. I'm excited. I can't wait to play it. I love Borderlands, so you know. Yeah, it's, I mean, for me, it's. Uh, it, I mean, it doesn't really. It, they never tickle my fancy too much. After the first, or maybe the second, I think first Borderlands, I sort of didn't didn't tick my boxes at all. But I played it a couple of times, um, co-op with people. I'm sure we probably played it together, mm. um, and sort of quite enjoyed it on the way through. Borderlands Two, I was then quite excited for, and I and I and I enjoyed that. Okay, yeah, I finished it. Didn't really go back to it. I didn't. Don't think I, I did a little bit of the Tiny Tina DLC because that looked interesting and that was mm. quite fun. Um, then Borderlands Three. I just kind of played it because everyone else was playing it. They don't really get me excited anymore. I just find yeah. them just a bit samey. I, w- I was I disappointed in Borderlands 3. I didn't gel with the classes in that or the characters. Yeah. But yeah. you will be delighted to know the most important character in all of Borderlands, aside from Tiny Tina, is back. Claptrap. But Stallion? But, but Stallion. Stallion. <laughs> he nailed it. But Stallion. Is, I was pointing at the camera, but you can see that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I really wanted to buy a T-shirt with that on, but as pointed out that might raise some questions if we want it in yeah. public so uh Fair enough. i've resisted the urge but, you know maybe <laughs> maybe this time around maybe this will be the one mm. is it the question i've gonna well, i really want to ask and we don't know yet is, is it going to feature anyone from the borderlands movie which is a pretty disappointing announcement on the gearbox uh, oh, session, but... you, mean, you mean the entire presentation with just him wandering oh, going here's a God. thing from the gearbox mo- the yeah. Borderlands movie here's oh look over here there's another thing from the Borderlands movie. We haven't got He's... any games to tell you about, so let's look at things from the Borderlands movie. Here's a short comedian. Talk to him for a bit. Yeah. That, that He's interesting. Everybody loves Kevin Hart. Let's but, talk to him for five but, minutes. That, that, that Tiny Tina announcement, that, that presentation was a train wreck, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Gearbox, their whole show was just like, wow. Mm. Just, just uh, wow. We'd have got as much information if they'd just put the video up of Borderlands yeah. of Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Yeah. If they'd put a five-minute video up of that, we'd had the same amount of content that we would have got from whatever it was, like 40 minutes. <laughs> anyway, that's well, not we would, about we that. Seen a gun. We wouldn't have seen a gun, you know, from a film that, you know. True. Let's, yeah. not, let's not trash this. Let, let's let Craig get onto his first game because I want to hear what he's excited about. So I'm building up. <laughs> okay, then. Moving on to mine. So my fa- I'm going to start with my favourite bit of the xbox e3 presentation by far outweighed anything else throughout the what entire show been? and possibly of any show as yet and that was the trailer for outer world <laughs> 2 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. because that was absolutely fantastic um oh, it was you, it, it was such so irreverent just so just take took the mick out of itself took the mick out of um, trailers in general, the industry, and it just, it was so, so funny. You know, we pan to a shot across a, a, a vast world to make our game seem big, and then something exciting happens. A monster that you'll never see again, gone. Uh, it was just brilliant the way they narrated <laughs> Forget it. Forget about it, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, it was absolutely Screen brilliant. Bloom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> end to show you that all we actually have made so far is this trailer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. I mean, brilliant trailer, um, but I was still very, very excited to um, uh, to know, know that that game's coming and it's going to be an exclusive to the Xbox platform. Yeah. So obviously, the Outer Worlds one was multi plat. You know, it was it was obviously released post Xbox purchasing um, yeah. Obsidian, uh, but the deals had already been put in. It was all private division. We knew it was going to come over to, under the Xbox umbrella from a, um, a press announcement a few weeks back. Um, but they have obviously officially now said it is day one on Game Pass, exclusive to Xbox. Um, and from what they did with the first game, and that was very much that kind of sci-fi Fallout kind of feeling game, wasn't it, if, uh, if everybody played it? Um, I'm really excited to see what they can do going forward. Um, I would like to see a little bit of an up, a, a jump up. I'd love to be able to, I'd love to be able to fly the ship. 
to be honest with you, rather than just using it as a teleport between planets. Might be asking a bit much, or maybe that's more of um, a Starfield's realm. Yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm hoping that comes up. But no, I'm dead excited for that to happen. And I think, they, yeah, they absolutely knocked it out of the park with that trailer. I mean, what do you boys Fair think? Play. Fair play to the marketing and to the writers mm, yeah. that, that work up at Obsidian. They have absolutely nothing to show us, and yet I'm excited about Outer Worlds 2. Yeah because yeah. of a trailer that told me absolutely nothing except for there was yeah. an Outer Worlds 2 going yeah. to happen in the future. I mean, just remarkable, hilarious, and by far, as you said, the best trailer out of the entire weekend. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, They did exactly what Starfield failed to do, which was tell us nothing and get us excited. Yeah, yeah that's really true, actually. That's really yeah, true. That is so true. Like, I think that's so the thing. Is, like, I'm excited. I, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. about Starfield. Bob Howard has come out and said, Starfield, yeah, it's doing mm. all right. No, I'll be honest, just going back on that Starfield, <laughs> I wasn't that pumped for it until I saw that trailer. And then I watched and then when I watched the thing today from Todd Howard, it pushed me right up and made it yeah. my most anticipated game. Yeah, for see, 2020. I was I was yeah. very much after the Starfield announcement, the thing that I, I was left with from the Starfield announcement on the day was oh, this is definitely an xbox exclusive yeah because they really like it was like xbox exclusive xbox exclusive xbox exclusive, xbox exclusive. it was like you know, just like beating a dead horse with it do you know what i mean and yeah. then like um that was the thing i got from that announcement more than starfield and then with the outer, outer worlds too like phil said like i instantly was like oh my god like this is like the trailer hooked me instantly like you said i was like okay well this is interesting and then, also, and then there's the first gag came and i was like all right you know and then and they just kept hitting with these these great gags that just landed every single time, and I was like, "Yeah, all right, this is this is clever, and I like it." And then we, you know, we've got a title, and it's like, okay, yeah. it's just it's no, or was it? Have we haven't even got a title? It was just the outer no, world. The, the only thing we've come up, the devs have come up with, is a name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I was like, "That's amazing!" You know, I thought that was just that was just my favorite thing about the whole. It was it was the most reverent and light hearted thing of the whole presentation, and I just mm. I love the way they went about it. I love the fact they didn't. Like, like, like Alan said, they didn't try and show anything. They just went, yeah, yeah we haven't got anything. Yeah, we know we haven't got anything. We'll just make a yeah. trailer and it says yeah. exactly that. But it's that. coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. It there you know. go. We yeah, it's, it, it's, it's all an announcement needs to be, isn't it? If, if you're excited for that game, you're excited for that game regardless. I mean, I think the, the, only, the only thing I can think where I saw something similar was when Mass Effect 3 was first announced. There was like, um, there was a really, really short like promo to announce Mass Effect 3. And the whole thing was like going on, da, 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 and then it was this guy standing at a window, and it just, and then right at the end of the trailer, the guy turned around and just saw the N7. And that was the end of it, and that was the only way you knew it was Mass Effect Three. And I was just, like, oh my god, you know, and that, was, that was all I needed to know. And I was excited at that moment, and that's exactly what the Outer World did, but, but in a comedy style, you know, it was like, yeah. here's funny things to laugh at. And yes, yeah, so I'm super excited for that. Super excited for that. Mm. Yeah, I think if they'd have gone and done the whole kind of uh, CGI trailer of actually showing what they wanted to do with the game, everyone would have been like, oh yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. But yeah, it yeah, was definitely. It, well, you, you would have had that thing where you just wouldn't have believed it, you know. Mm. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Mm. Cool. Right. And around we go again. Back to Thunderlips McQueen. So, what's your second game, my man? Right. Well, my second game is uh, Back for Blood, uh, which is from the old Turtle Rock Studios. I mean, I, I mean, would I say that the E three presentation made me any more excited for this game? Not really. Because I'm super stoked for it already. I, I couldn't be more stoked uh, for this game. Um, but it was interesting from a lot of the cut, the footage that we saw to really see how invested they are in this title and how many things they are improving on. Because in everything but name, it's Left 4 Dead 3. And everything that I've seen and saw in the trailer where they were basically showcasing a, a game mode, um, which is swarm mode, which basically involves it's kind of the PVP from Left 4 Dead where you, you get one team playing as the what they call the ridden. And then you get one team playing as the cleaners. And then you basically have to kill the cleaners, the human players as quickly as possible. And then it kind of switches teams and then you have to get whoever gets the best time. It's yeah. like best out of three kind of thing. And it looks fantastic. And they also gave us a little bit about the some of the uh, the sort of the variants on the Ridden, which I thought was really interesting because if we think back to Left 4 Dead, they had, what was it, about five or six what we call special, like, you know, zombies. And here they, I don't know whether there are more. I haven't seen any more yet. I do know there's the big dude, but they showed that there were three different types they were showcasing here. Um, each of those three types had variants 
So it was kind of like you had like, your, you know, your Rika, but then you had a wretch and Exploder. So these were the big bulky ones. And one of them was a bit like a, what do they call the one that throws up over you from Left 4 Dead? I forgot what it's called. Oh, oh, a, boomer. Boomer. A, boomer. No, a Boomer. A Boomer, that's it. No, yeah, Boomer, Boomer. boomer. Yeah, boomer. boomer. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. here it's called a wretch. But then there was one that was in the same class that was called an Exploder which is kind of like the one that... So it's kind of like they, they look similar, but what they do different things. So you then have this into this multiplayer PvP mode. And it, it just... It, everything they keep telling me makes me more and more excited about how how good this game is going to be. Because let's face it, you can still put Left 4 Dead on right now, and I don't think we did not that long ago. And we sit down and we play it, and we just love it. We enjoy it. Mm. It's, it's about as perfect a game as you can get. The only one complaint I'd say about Left 4 Dead is that the AO on the zombies is not very great. You know, they too tend to just swarm in one area and it's just like a big mass. And that's something that they that they have already said they're addressing on Back for Blood, that they get the AI on the zombies is really, really clever. And it, they will try and flank you and do all sorts of great stuff, which is going to make those campaign uh, missions absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. And as I say, everything I see about it makes me think more and more Left 4 Dead, this is looking amazing. I'm super excited. And the release date is um, October the 12th. There is going to be uh, a beta. So there's the pre-order beta on August the 5th, if you pre-order it. And if you don't, there's an open beta on August the 12th. So we should be able to see uh, some actual in-game content as of the beginning of August, which is going to be very well, nice. And we've oh, if, you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it, a load of the PC players had access to an alpha. Have seen it, yeah, yeah. If you be, what, what going, yeah, it was a lot, a lot, of, a lot of yeah. streamers were playing it. There was some good stuff yeah. in there, I thought. Mm. Yeah, and it, I mean, it, it was a bit buggy but, to that yeah. point. Exactly, it wasn't finished at that point. So, but you know, you can still get a general idea of the flavour of the game. Um, and I think that's it's left for dead, know. isn't it? It is left for dead. It, it, is it? And you I can't, can't wait. You can't answer that. I mean, as can't I say, wait. there was one scene where the, where the, I think it was the wretcher was like spewing up in the PvP game over everybody, and they all got that kind of yellowy orange outline. I'm like, it's just, it's left for dead. Yeah. Yeah. This is exactly the same. And it doesn't matter because, as I said, Left 4 Dead is a pitch perfect game with those updates and modernizations that Back for Blood are bringing in. I mean, for example, the weapons, you know, in Left 4 Dead, you get like, you know, there's like three weapons. What's it? There's the assault rifle, there's the shotgun, there's the sniper, and nobody really uses the sniper, let's be honest. And then you have your pistols, unless you think you're really cool. Look at me with my sniper. And they're here, they're, they're having a whole. <laughs> That whole variety of weapons that are customizable. Yeah, we're not just talking about like two or three different weapon types. So they're taking everything in the game and they're saying, right, how can we improve this for this this modern generation? That's what makes me super excited. Take something that's almost near damn perfect already, and then modernize it, upgrade everything that doesn't quite work, and then you then you do have perfection. So uh, yeah, very mm. excited for that. Yeah, it's good stuff, and it's going to have a really good player base, I would imagine, due yeah. to being day one on Game Pass. You what know, a shocker! Okay. Is it really? Oh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> there's got to love that I, though. Yeah, mm. there's one thing I always dread in these announcements, and that's the moment when I'm we're playing a game like this where you're being attacked by lots of enemies, and they say we've upgraded the AI. Because all I think to myself, oh god, this game is going to be even more difficult. I'm going to get murderized by we even the little ones. Have like have the... to work as a blooming team, Phil. You know, instead of you know, running off on your own. It's like being taken out by one of the little flood spawn in Halo. Like you know, all the rest are dead, but that one's the really clever one with the good AI, and it sneaks up behind you and attacks the back of your head or something like that. It's like the face huggers in Aliens. You know, on their own, they don't look that dangerous, but once you get locked in a room with one, it's basically game over. Yeah, uh, that's what's I happening. Know, I right here. That's what she about you, Phil. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Next game so, is <laughs> heading round the room uh, over to Mr. Ratley, if he can compose himself. Um, what is your uh, next game, please? I'm so glad you put Ratley after me. I'm considering this a challenge every time yeah. it comes. Uh, oh no! <laughs> I might have just have to mute you for the last like 60 seconds of your section. Uh, just keep lining them up <laughs> then. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with the, with the, well, the, I suppose the zombie theme, and it's in a similar vein. Is Rainbow Six Extraction floated my boat, and I, I, I think I might be in a minority, minority here. But I, I quite like the look of Rainbow Six Extraction, mainly because I liked the. I, I, I mean, I was playing with uh, friends. We were we, we played. When I play Rainbow Six. I don't tend to play the um, uh, the competitive PvP because I'm rubbish. Um, like I'm very rubbish. I'm quite happily rubbish, and I know I'm rubbish. So I quite enjoy the the PVE modes in Rainbow Six, and uh, I played the event when it was on. I thought it was fun, but it was obviously like quite 
quite basic. You know, they just added some enemy types and threw it in there. Whereas this has got all the sprawl mechanics, so you can shoot that way and you move slower through it and then you move faster through it. You know, um, I thought some of the, the mechanics sounded great. It does look a little arcadey at points. Um, I thought, you know, uh, you know, like some people are comparing Stalker to this. I'm like, well, they're obviously different games. Uh, I think this is this is a um, it's designed as a PVE experience, obviously, the arcadey nature of it. Uh, and I think, yeah, Back for Blood is a little more horde based intensity. You know, there's going to be much more zombie stuff. But I thought this, like the idea of tactically moving through, taking out enemies as you go, you know, I like the enemy types they showed. I thought it looked like a lot of fun, like a, an interesting way to play Rainbow Six, to be fair. Like, I'm quite, I'm quite excited for it. I want to see what it's like. You know, hopefully it won't be stupidly expensive uh, and, you know, full of microtransactions, but we, yeah, we, it will be full of microtransactions. That is going to have all the microtransactions under the sun yeah. in it. I it's mean, already fair, up for pre-order. And it is yeah. a full sixty pound game, yeah, yeah, um, and it will be full of microtransactions. It will have all oh, you know stuff it. on it, yeah. Because, because, well, yeah. to be fair to Ubisoft, why wouldn't they? Look how well Rainbow Six mm-hmm. Siege has done with microtransactions, right? Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I might, it might be one that while I'm excited for, I might hang fire picking up on. I don't know, but mm-hmm. I'm certainly in more interested than I was from that first initial trailer. I was like, oh, great, they're just making a, a more extended mode of that mode. It's going to be a repeated seasonal event or whatever. In, in Rainbow Six, it might give me a reason to more of a reason to occasionally fire up Siege and, and go back in. But when it was a full game, I was like, okay. There was one one mechanic I thought was really cool. Was like, like, like you down an operator, they take the operator away, and you have to go back and rescue that operator. I thought yeah. that was a really cool touch. You know, so you can't just constantly just run run the same operator until you get captured or what have you. You know, it is, there is actually, you know, and you, and if you lose, you lose all of your progress, like all of your stuff. I thought that was quite like so. There's a bit, a bit of risk and reward element to it. So we should see how well it pulls it off. Um, it could be brilliant. It could be bad. I'm interested. I think it's the best way to I think describe. I that. was, I was the complete polar opposite to you. Whereas I was like, oh, I'm looking forward to find out more about extraction or quarantine, as it used to be called. Um, but yep. yeah, about extraction because I thought it was going to be a little DLC for um, Rainbow Six or like a kind of a, a new mode that they add onto it because I thought, you know, Siege has got such a big player base. Great, add a new mode onto it. It's a new way to get more income. And then I was like, hold on, it's a full price game. Nah. No, I, I think, just, yeah, I've got to I mean, agree. Was, I think on that was a yeah. bit of a slip up. It should have been like a, a premium expansion maybe. Yeah, maybe 20 um, quid, 25 quid or something. I might have gone, yeah, it's well, worth we, it. Yeah, we, but we could be selling it really hardly short because it could be a much bigger mm. game than we think. But could I be. have a feeling, yeah, I have a feeling you're right and I think it will probably reek of should have been an expansion. But I think the game mode interests me enough that I could get some play out of it and maybe not a full price, but, you know, a slight reduction, which let's face mm. it, Ubisoft are quite, quite good with putting stuff on the sale on a very regular basis <laughs> when it doesn't sell very well yeah <laughs> yeah it's like instantly on sale woohoo yeah. You know, so yeah um yeah i think it's yeah i think we again i know it's it's a different game but you've got things like back for blood kind of hanging around there on game pass you don't have to pay for it that would kind of get my fix for that type of game i think i can't see myself yeah, I, 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 mean, I, I think that's you know. yeah it's a different type of game though is it because siege is obviously much more space is, tactical is, yeah. slowly you, yeah you've yeah. got much whereas like back for blood is like ah Zombies, kill the zombies. Like, and and I think that that's that they are very different in that respect. But they are also I can understand why if you if you're having your itch scratched with back for blood, Mm. extraction is kind of you know is is unnecessary sometimes. You know, so I mean, I mean, I'm just I'm more you know interested and than excited. I would say it did enough to make me go, oh, hold on, yeah, okay, there's more to that than I thought. So Mm. yeah, I'm I I like Rainbow. It's got some of the best shooting mechanics out there as well. Siege has got some tight shooting so if they can mm. replicate that with a bit more sci-fi and some cool mechanics yeah, I'm, yeah i'll give it a we'll go I'm, I'm quite down for it uh what did you think mr phil excited or not no no if I'm with you, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really excited? play siege i yeah, tried right. the extraction mode when it was in siege it was all right i had a bit of a laugh with it but it wasn't didn't float my boat mm. um let's be honest it's a 60 pound game but it's going to end up in game pass seeds ended up in game pass so <laughs> we won't have to wait too long to try it out for free because uh you know I, I i sense another break point here with this if i'm honest with you mm. it, it does feel like a game no one asked for this true it's what i say i wish i, I yeah. i'm with craig in that i wish it had been an expansion but as it's a game i'm i'm, I'm kind of interested to give it a punt but I, I wish mm. it had been an expansion because, as Craig said, you've got that player base just baked into it straight off the bat. And I think maybe Ubisoft are overshooting what they think the Siege name can carry at this point. You know, does that make sense? 
Mm. Yeah, so, I don't think the people so, who play so, Siege Hardcore are going to come to this. They're just going to stick with so Siege. To, to kick off, before I say anything else, I just want to say it's fantastic, because just over your left shoulder, Chris, there is a mini Phil Spencer. I want a mini Phil Spencer oh, in my life. And Craig. And Craig's sorry, Craig, screen. sorry, yeah, Craig. Yeah. Oh, I want yeah. a mini Phil Spencer in my life. Mm. I want him sitting, yeah. standing on the desk behind him and giving, giving me business advice. Yeah, I want my mini Phil Spencer. Anyway, going back to uh, Extraction, um, I had so much fun with co uh, a Contamination, was it called? A contamination? Yeah, it sounds, yeah. It contamination. yeah. But I had very short amount of a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, we went in and we didn't have any expectations and we played it like for a week and it was great. And then it went away and we completely forgot about it. And that's my concern with Extraction. It's it, it, same as you guys said. It doesn't seem like a full product. Maybe we haven't seen enough of it. Maybe there's a lot more content, a lot more depth to it than we know. But uh, I think I'm kind of in the same camp as Phil. The chances are it will come to Game Pass. I mean, how how old are you? How long are they going to flog this dead horse of Siege? It's it it has a big <laughs> audience, sure. But at the same time, add, add, adding additional content to it, I'm just I'm just not that interested. I'm kind of like yeah. yeah well, you, but I think I think that's really unfair to Siege. Siege has got a yeah. hardcore player base. It does have it's, a it's, big. It's, 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 it's now it's now well. yeah. yeah. It's now like the second most. I think uh, the the FPS Twitch shooters. It's like only second now to Counter Strike. I think in terms of. Mm -hmm global play in that for so, me personally, so it's not really a dead horse to be I, fair to it I, <laughs> you know? for me it is for me it is and i've moved on a long time ago mm -hmm. and i'm not i'm not that worried about going back to it and i'm sure a lot of other people are so you know uh, it, it, it's yeah it, with back for blood as you said if, it, if, it, if i see more stuff and it's like oh actually that's interesting because i'm not adverse to this idea of having something a bit more less running around screaming with tons of zombies running at you I'm, I'm always interested for a different take on the on the genre and that's what mm. it looks like and yeah sure it looks arcadey but it's got, again that's you know, graphics John's that's thing, interpretation yeah. it doesn't you know one, one thing doesn't make just made me think though about that about that alan was, was something you just said and it just made me for some reason think it had a little bit because of the whole lose every, every progress all that kind of stuff a little bit gave me a little bit of an XCOM vibe to it because it's like the alien in thing and i was like oh, okay there's actually weight to losing you know i thought of the hunt have you ever played that? Have you ever played the I hunt? I haven't played the hunt, no. Now that's again, that's an on -play, online player game. You actually have to get a character. You have oh, no. I and haven't played die, it. I know of it. Yeah. You lose yeah. the character and you lose yeah. everything else. So there's, it's real, hard, there's, real, yeah. there's real repercussions to your actions. So it's about real one, isn't it? See how yeah. far that gets pushed. You know, if you lose an operator, how many operators do you lose until you haven't got any left and you can't go back in? You know, I'm interested to see how that mechanic actually works and if it really <laughs> does add weight to the gameplay. If you, you know, everybody's playing as like Sledge and then all of a sudden you need Sledge to do a certain part of the mission or it makes it twice as hard and you have to go, does it does it add real implications? Is there real mm. depth to those choices? Could I mean, be. That could be something which could really shine out for it when we, when you get the full game. Yeah, it might be that like, the operators really have more weight to, like their skills and stuff really like shining that and if you and it might take so long to unlock skills that you could end up with this thing who knows but at the minute i'll say i'm interested i like i like the look of some of the uh the ideas with it i do want to see more I, I i'm hoping there'll be a chance to play it before we buy it you know just to give it a thing to make sure that i want to spend my money on it i mean i'm not sure i'm definitely going to spend my money on it but i was i was like surprisingly like oh this is this is better than i thought it was going to be but i mean maybe that's just like incredibly low expectations for it i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and i did see it before cool. i saw back for blood and black for blood definitely got like a lot of the, the juices pumping for that zombie killing mm. as well so yeah cool right nice one brilliant well let's um let's move around to mr phil next and before i do though just want to let everyone know that ratley isn't sitting in a smoke filled room he's just having some internet problems it's looking a little bit fuzzy <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's not got a, like a what they call it a shisha pipe he what they call them Are those shisha things pipe, that yeah. you get like yeah, yeah in marrakesh or whatever yeah yeah no i think he's living in a part of the matrix that's degrading yeah <laughs> Right, Mr. Phil, game number two from you, please. Game number two, stepping up in my level of interest and excitement, was Babylon's Fall. Mm. And the reason I'm excited by this is because it's Square Enix and Platinum Games. Like, yeah. Near Automata and Final Fantasy merged together, hopefully with the best bits of both as opposed to the worst. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I am uh, I'm quite excited by this. It is described as a hack and slash style MORPG. So only one M because it's not massive. It's just a <laughs> multiplayer online RPG. Um, you're going to be able to work in teams of up to four or you'll be able to play through it solo on there. 
Uh, it has a highly customizable characters, as you would find in most of these kind of sort of JRPGs. You know, you better change outfits and hairstyles and everything else that you can do on those. Um, and the uh, the style is considered a brushwork visual style to give it a medieval oil painting aesthetic. <laughs> you can see from the video, which because I have Brad Vorbrand is stuttering at the moment. Well, I think it's uh, stuttering. Sure it looks I think it might be an else. issue with the program actually, but oh dear. Mm. Uh, yep, yeah, it's oh, okay. I'm I'm going to try not to choke as I say this. It is a live service game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, which... you, you just keep knocking them out of the park. Just selling this to me, mate. Keep going. I know. Keep going. I was going so well, and then I hit live service. Like, oh, <laughs> even I choked a little bit when I read that. But you know what? Not sometimes they get it right. Fortnite. Um, so the idea is it's going to be an ongoing. They're going to constantly release updates, new content. They're going to add new uh, fighting styles, new moves for each of the characters. They've said um, it's the way they described it. It's going to be almost designed like um, almost like they call it Babylon's Fall, but it's going to be like I suppose the Tower of Babylon. Like you're going to basically be on one floor. You're going to fight your way through the floor. You're going to come to a big hench boss at the end of the level you're going to fight and demolish him and then you're going to move up to a new floor which will be a completely different environment so the one at the moment we had sort of a lava style one and then this one we're outside fighting a dragon the idea is that each level is going to be completely different with new challenges new enemies new bosses and they're just going to keep adding and adding and adding to it hence the live games as a service on there uh, I think that was most of it. I mean, to be fair, this game was actually supposed to come out in 2019, but uh, oh, right. COVID wow. and it got delayed. <laughs> oh, God, God. Keep it coming, Phil. Keep it coming. Yeah, it got oh, delayed with, and it got delayed oh, again. Oh, did you say with COVID it got delayed? in it was Well, no, it just got delayed. No, it got delayed, <laughs> no, it got delayed into 2020, and then it got delayed again because of COVID. But basically, okay. you didn't say anything about it in 2020, and then they've obviously given us this E3 trailer saying it is alive, it's here. There's obviously, there is... A very large audience for this for people that love Final Fantasy, that love Neo Automata. So, you know, there's a lot of people are very excited about this. Me it's given me almost a little bit of a Dragon's Dogma feel to it as well. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. I mean, Dragon's Dogma's Capcom. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, I get what you say, like with the bow and arrow and mm. like the way they sort of attack and things. I mean, that's great because yeah. Dragon's Dogma is like one of my favorite games of all time. I've sunk yeah. hundreds of hours <laughs> into that game <laughs> on multiple platforms. Yeah. Three, to be exact. <laughs> 360, Xbox One, and PC. <laughs> cool. So. Good stuff. Well, uh, okay. yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, there's nothing for me to add on that one. It looks uh, looks all right. But anything from anyone else? I just wanted I, to say that uh, it makes me incredibly happy. Happy to see, to see Phil excited about this game because I love Phil. He's a, he's a close friend, and I want him Aww. to be happy, and that's all I have to say about this game. It's so sweet. I think, wow, I think it's I more Alan, quite... Alan's like, Alan, Alan's, what Alan's really trying to say is, it makes me really happy to know that Phil will get completely obsessed with this game and I won't have to talk to Phil for about six weeks. <laughs> 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 There's the backhanded compliment I was waiting for. <laughs> no, I, I got Thank you for great. not saying it, Alan. I appreciate yeah, that. <laughs> it, it, looks, it looks great, but it really isn't for me. Like, it's a game which doesn't hold any interest to in me. That's, again, it's just, just not for me. But it looks, I, got, I like the aesthetic, the art style, that whole, you know, that. What is it? Oil painting? You said. Uh, yeah, aesthetic? medieval oil yeah. painting is the aesthetic they're going for. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I think oil painting would have sufficed. Medieval oil medieval painting. Medieval oil painting isn't that a barn that's with a wall says. covered in excrement? Yeah. <laughs> it's one yeah. of those games you want to be in, but you don't want to be in that world. Well, I'm, I'm, actually, in fact, were they using oil paints in the medieval? Uh, it's lead no, you're the one with the art probably. degree, mate. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think that's, that's what I'm thinking. They're going. I don't think they were. You know, I mean, it might have been some oil based, I suppose. But you know, I would imagine. I'd paint imagine their armor with something for the crests and things. We're yeah, really but... getting off topic here. Yeah, I'm not I sure. Let's move on. I'll, 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 do, I'll do some other homework. Yeah, I'll do some other homework. <laughs> I, I need to know for myself now. But yeah, I mean, I say aesthetically, it looks great. It looks like it's got fun gameplay. I hope it's everything you dream of, Phil. But I, again, I'm I'm very cold on it. But I'm likely to be sorely disappointed. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be playing on your own. Put it that way. Yeah, don't rope us into it. Uh, <laughs> cool. Right. Okay. So my second game then. So um, it was from uh, not from the Xbox showcase, but a game that um, apparently was leaked a couple of years ago that completely passed me by, and I didn't even know. But it was the Guardians of the Galaxy game. Um, so this obviously came up, saw the title, saw, you know, 
some really nice looking graphics and really interesting art style um and it came up you know it's from the makers deus ex um you know it's got a real kind of 80s feel to it um it's got like 30 licensed 80s tracks within it so they're kind of going with that whole you know he's got his walkman and stuff the guy from earth um so i mean you you, you control star lord um and then you control the rest of the guardians as part of a team that you use kind of abilities on like a kind of a time time slow down wheel sort of situation you know, right you know gamora go and slash and whatever it might do um i was at the point where i was going right this looks really interesting and really exciting i like this however i thought avengers looked really interesting and really exciting and i was bitten hard by that game because that game sucks um i mean it, the, the campaign was okay but it was just ruined by all the live service stuff so i was watching that trailer and i started to see I saw some gear drop at one point and I saw some XP pop up and I thought, oh no, they're not doing it again, are they? But when they've actually come out afterwards and actually clarified so in interview some details about the game, it is a single player narrative driven adventure game with zero micro transactions and zero DLC. So everything is available to earn within the game. It's made by the makers of Deus Ex. It's going to have meaningful choices throughout that we saw. There's moments where don't be something that made me laugh. Drax holding Rocket and was about to throw him across a ravine, and you get to choose whether he throws him or not, which was good. He's like, Quill, ah! Like, it was brilliant. Um, absolutely fantastic. It looks a really, really interesting game. It was a real highlight for me. Um, it's, um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else. It's what I wanted Avengers to be, and it's what Avengers wholly wasn't. Um, so I'm dead, dead excited about that one. Real good one. Anybody else excited as much? I am the everyone's polar opposite of you about that. To yeah. be honest with you, yeah. I thought I thought it looked really bland, mm. like the whole way through it. I mean, I'm really happy about the decisions around the it being a single player, narrative driven, zero microtransactions, mm. zero DLC. That makes me happy because it sounds like they've actually got a plan for where they want it to go. I thought the writing, the writing in it, just that whole trailer, just felt like they'd given yeah. an AI the script for Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy Two, and went, "Give us a script," and it gone, "Boom." And turned out a script really? which was just like by the numbers, the gags you'd expect. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and like maybe two of them landed for me. There was one where I did chuckle, it was a Drax gag, I can't remember what it was, but I did mm. chuckle quite a lot. But I thought the combat looked like Mass Effect on speed, mm. um, which isn't a bad thing because you know the, the menus and doing things. And I thought the bit where they combat the team was quite fun looking. But I was like, my my initial thought about that was, well, my, my thought after the big battle sequence in it, I went, that's going to look really fun for about 20 minutes, half an hour. And then it's going to get really old, really fast. And I was just like, my worry is, has it got enough to sustain the core loop of gameplay? I like the way that, it, you know, when you, you made decisions, it immediately gave you feedback, a bit like the Telltale games, like where it said, mm. you know, when, you threw, when he threw Rocket, it said Rocket is furious that you let yeah. Gru um, um, Gru uh, Drax throw him. And I thought that was quite cool. But that reminded me of the Telltale games in a massive way. Um, but it just, it just felt incredibly generic, incredibly by the numbers, I didn't like the character designs much. I've got to be honest. Um, you can't really go wrong. I mean, Rocket is is a is a raccoon, isn't it? Let's face it. Like yeah. I thought he was probably he was probably the only one I really liked. I thought everyone else. Oh, and, and again, uh, sorry, and the tree that is uh, Groot. You know, there's not much you can do. Those two nailed. But I didn't like the look of Star Lord more than that. But again, that could just be that I'm overly familiar with how the MCU interpretations look, etc. Yeah. They're not those things, you know. Mm. But I just, yeah, I don't know. It just it left me. It left me happy in the way they're addressing what they're doing with it, but the game looked very unsatisfying to me. Uh, and like I said, I didn't, I didn't care for the the humour. There was a lot of missed gags for me. I mean, there were a couple of really good ones, but like I say, most mm. of it just missed. I, I would have. I think also the thing that puts me off is the fact you only ever play a Star Lord. I would have liked the ability to, you know, actually independently control them for different areas of the game. Um, you know, so I don't know. It, it, it's just just me being that, like you know, it's just just what it is. So uh, I. I yeah, I just like to say I'm on that opposite end to you. I, I, yeah, I wasn't yeah, yeah. super excited, so um, but I can I, see why you would be excited. So I time. kind of kind of fall in the middle. Um, I've got the same sort of apprehension that you kind of had at the beginning, Craig. Mm. I, I I'm completely disagree with Chris on the aesthetic. 
I thought the aesthetic was a, a bold choice. I like the characters. I, uh, I think, again, it, to me, it would be easy if they had the license to just do exactly the ones that are in the Marvel movies and everybody go, oh, yeah, it's Rocket. That's, that's you know, Chris Pratt. That's, you know, it's easy. It's simple. And they, they it looks to me like they've gone for the comic book interpretations yeah, yeah, of definitely. them. Um, and I really like that. And I really like the characters from the get go. Um, I think the voices and something like, you know, you listen to, I think you hear Rocket the, and Drax probably the most. But I think overall, I kind of enjoyed their, again, their interpretation. Oh, yeah. Of it. Actually, to be um, fair, to, oh, well, I wasn't criticizing the voice acting. Yeah. The voice acting was great in it. I forgot, yeah, to be fair, it wasn't but, that at all there. Yeah. But the, uh, again, and with the combat, I have to say that I, I thought that had potential. I think, you know, I'm not that worried about playing as just Star-Lord. I play as one character in plenty of other games. And I know there's an ensemble piece. But at the same time, I was thinking, were you, I was quite impressed that you got to use the entire, you know, sort of roll-up of all the Guardians within the combat and their different abilities. And I'm hoping if it's made by the guys who made Dosex that there's probably going to be upgrades that you can do for each of your different characters. And yeah, they'll have yeah. different moves and actions and things that they can do, which is, it's almost like having five sets of like different powers that you can bring to the mix and create a fight that is in multiple places that you're still in control of i quite like that idea um and uh on a basic level i can see what chris is saying but i think once you start to add different abilities in there and bigger fights then that might be really really cool i kind of get a small vibe of uh what was it the the star wars game jedi fallen order but just a little bit just a little mm. little bit um, a little bit of that essence. It's not quite the same. Um, so I'm quietly optimistic. I'm not excited for it, but I am kind of like, yeah, the same as you. I, Avengers bit me a bit. I was excited for it, and it didn't turn out exactly nowhere near what we wanted. No. <laughs> and the minute I saw this, I was kind of like, oh, well, this is just going to be another Avengers, isn't it? But uh, clearly it, it isn't, and there is a pedigree behind the developers. They've created quality games before this. So, you know, I'm yeah, uh, but on that, it. Crystal Dynamics made fantastic games before they launched the Avengers. Mm. So, well, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Know. But, 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 you know, um, I, yeah, so I, I'm on the fence, I, I'm quietly optimistic. I like what I've seen so far, um, and I'll be uh, keeping an eye out of any other information, quite frankly, mm. for that game. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm gonna jump back onto Craig's side of the fence. I'm now quite excited for this. I was not excited by Avengers when we heard about it and then it turned out to be an absolute dog and I felt completely vindicated in my choice that I wasn't excited about it and I saw this and I thought same as you guys here we go again I'm not interested uh the fact that it's a single player now actually has me quite interested because it gives me Final Fantasy 15 vibes because mm. when they originally launched that you could only play as Noctis but and the other guys would just kind of do their own thing yeah. and you could set up like combo attacks then but then as they gradually added content to 15 they they sort of added separate DLCs for each of the characters. And then once they'd added all of the DLC, they then let you play all of the characters in combat and you could switch between them. And I can very much see them potentially doing a similar thing with this. I mean, it's, it's Square Enix again, so it's right in their wheelhouse. You start off with the kind of the Star-Lord experience. And then, you know, I know they've said they hadn't planned any DLC, but I'm sure they will do updates and fixes and things I like that. And I think with the DLC thing, I think they probably mean that kind of you can buy these guns and you can buy yeah. these outfits. I think that's it probably... doesn't mean they won't expand it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Expansions, so... I think everyone's fine with buying a, an expanded bit of game. Yeah. It's like a mini sequel, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I could see them very much almost doing like they did with Final Fantasy 15, where you had like Gladius's arc and you had... Um... Prompto's arc, they'll do the same thing. You know, you'll have Gamora's arc and you have maybe Groot's arc. Mm. And uh, they, they did it in Final Fantasy being quite clever. There was bits in the game where one of the characters would drop out and you'd only have like the, th the two other characters at the time. And then you would go and do their bit of DLC and it filled in the gap in the middle of the story where they were missing and what happened to them. So it wouldn't surprise me if they did something kind of along those lines. Maybe that's how they do the DLC. And then it will culminate with you being able to just switch around. It'll just be an absolute mess of magic and abilities and Gamora stabbing people in the face. <laughs> I mean, that's my hopes anyway. But yeah, yeah I, I like it. And uh, again, you know, I know we've talked about the aesthetic a lot. You know, I, I just literally Googled Guardians of the Galaxy comic and yeah, they've totally gone for the comic book aesthetic, mm. which I think is a smart move because the second you're starting to play Chris Pratt and Zoe Salander, your, yeah. your bill mm. of <laughs> services goes up significantly. Mm. So I think actually, you know what, that money is far better invested into the game. Yeah. And into the resources than just getting a couple of big names on it. 
Plus, I think Avengers, they looked so close to the MCU characters yeah. that people that's what people got people annoyed. If they were far enough away, people were going, oh, it's the comic book versions. But people were like, are they comic book or are they MCU? They're, what are they? They've, yeah. they've only made <laughs> well, that just worse cheap by... knockoffs. Yeah, they've they only made that worse by then selling selling the MCU outfits now, haven't yeah. they? Which yeah. they're actually like premium items. It's like, oh my god. But yeah, that, but that's the other thing is like, I think at the minute I'm still very, very, very burnt by the Avengers. Not that I was, I was with Phil with that. I was never excited for it, but it mm. felt like such a phenomenal waste of that IP. Mm. I mean, I'm hoping that yeah, again, like as Alan has said, I am. Whilst I said I'm not excited for it, I am hoping to be proven wrong. Because you know it could be a really great narrative experience. I love that mm. kind of game, but I'm just I just I watched it and it just felt flat to me. Like it just so here you go. Me. Right, here's a question for you. Because I mean, you're very open. The fact that you're kind of burnt out on Marvel, you've had yep. too much Marvel at you. Do you think if it was a DC property like a Justice League or something, uh, it might I'm... have? Because because uh, is it the Marvel thing that's in it? Because it's it's pretty. There's there's a lot of high praise about it going around. I just wonder if you think maybe that's kind of tainted it's, it's, for you. Because it's, defi it's definitely tainted it for me. But yeah. equally, like you know, there's also that Avengers. It's, it's still like it's still stinging with me. I hmm. I still I'll be honest. A little bit of me is like bitter because they can Deus the next Deus Ex to give us this, and I don't care how good it is. A Guardians of the Galaxy. I want more Deus Ex. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like that 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 annoys me more that Deus Ex was canned off for Guardians. Mm. I I it, it just felt like it was standing on a crutch the whole time for me. Like one thing, like it just it was just like it looks a little dull, let's give you a banger of an 80s tune, you mm. know, and it was too much of that that stuff kicking in as opposed to me being excited by what I saw, just kind of me being like, Oh, look at that cool bit where like oh, the song's playing. You know, that that was ticking the boxes. But the gameplay just looked dull to me. I don't care what anyone says. Mm -hmm. That that combat system mm -hmm. just looked dull, I, I, just a mess. And I thought it was going to be... And again, I know I'm in the minority. And I, I, it's not the thing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mind being the outlier. I don't mind being mm -hmm. like Phil in this instance. Because yeah. there are plenty of games <laughs> that people have told me, you've got to play them in the greatest game ever. And I'm just like, what? It's like a great example would be like, we all rave about Mass Effect. And I love Mass Effect. And I've just finished Mass Effect 2. And I'm moving on to Mass Effect 3. And I, I just finished the Arrival DLC, and it was the most best thing. And I've got a friend who sat there and went, I, I played two hours of Mass Effect, and I can't sort of fuss about I hate it. Yeah. I'm like, fine, you know? It's well, like you with the Last of Us, there. isn't it? Last of Us, yeah. you didn't like The Last of Us, just, yeah. I just could not connect with those characters in the slightest. It the gameplay different. left me really cold. And mm -hmm. I think this is the thing, is like, I just looked at it, and I, I just thought it just looked... I don't know, it just didn't land for me. And whatever me measure it was, and like I say, I didn't find the humour good. I, mm -hmm. I, I know my humour isn't... They, they're very much in that Marvel line of humour with the quippy one-liners and the gags and that. And I and I'm definitely fed up of that. Like I know that for a fact. That that formula that it's got has definitely flopped foam past me for for sure. Whereas like I loved it in the first Guardians, and now I'm just sick of it. Um, and I just think that I, maybe I need something fresh. I don't think a DC property would have been any different. I just think the gameplay looked pretty bad as well. Mm. I just genu genuinely we'll did find not out like when they um, we'll find out when we get some more Gotham Knights info. Won't to be we? fair, we'll I, was, I wasn't even that excited about that. Yeah, Zach I wasn't Snyder's even that excited about Gotham, Gotham Knights. Nice. Yeah, Gotham Knights mm -hmm. has left me cold for a while, to be fair. Like, I love the Arkham games, and I was like, want more Arkham games? And then Gotham Knights got announced, and I just kind of went... Eh. Oh, I'm pumped for that. I'm looking for I don't know, it's, it's, it's this thing of, like, you know, a Batman game without Batman. It's, uh, that's a tough one, isn't it? That's a very tough one, you know? But yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Okay. I could be wrong. Cool. Sweet, no worries, right. So back round again to Mr. Thunderlips McQueen. What's your next game, my friend? Um, it's a bit of an outlier, actually, and I wasn't expecting it. Um, I didn't really uh, um, see it on the list of games or anything like that. And that's uh, Riders Republic mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know Ubisoft. Um, and it, it, it's basically it's steep too, isn't it? it, it it's steep <laughs> yeah. too. And from what I understand, the, the the developer, which is actually the Ubisoft An Anarchy Anarchy division yeah they were actually responsible for steep road to the olympics so they actually did the add-on pack for the original steep um and it just looks like good fun i mean no this weekend you know i've been down with you guys and we've been having an e3 weekend watching the presentations but we've also been sitting there drinking too much and playing party games and this is the kind of thing where it just it just looks fun I'm not looking for the best graphics ever, although it looks very nice. Yeah, it does look good. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, the, the bit with the bike scene going down the hill. I mean, that it's, looks it's, amazing. it's bang on, isn't it? Um, I'm going to crash about 15 million times when he made it down all the way perfectly. <laughs> I, I would have fallen off the mountain about six different times, but that's beside the bike. Um, and there seems so much, so much room in that game 
to just have fun if you're there with your friends. And that's the caveat for me, because I was into Steep when it first came out, but none of you buggers were, and I couldn't get anybody <laughs> to play it. And it's a bit soulless if you're just playing on your own. After a while, you'll just be like, yeah, I wish I had from mm. friends. Mate, you know? it's on Game Pass now, and I'm still not interested in playing exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. And I like yeah. extreme sports. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but in the same vein, I'm not downloading Final Fantasy to play that with you either, so you know that's fair enough. <laughs> and I wouldn't um, ask you to. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, because basically because I'd just whinge the entire time we played and, and moan about everything that was just didn't make any sense, which would be most... Exactly. Of I just don't... Yeah. I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy, let alone you, Alan. Let alone me. Thank you very much, Phil. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so Riders Republic, it's... Uh, it's no, wait for it. Wait for it. It's not a Game Pass exclusive. Oh, so <laughs> you'll have to pay money for it, which, you know, unless oh, it does dear. something out of the box or everybody in our group suddenly went, oh, I really want that game. I'm unlikely to actually buy it, but I am excited by it. I mean, one of the big selling points was the size of some of the races. We were talking 50 person races. Mm. It looked absolute chaos. 50 people going down a hill or 50 people on jetpacks flying through a canyon. It looked pretty epic. I'm not Wasn't there mixed it. mixed disciplines? Well, wasn't there some people there was, like some people yeah, like some jetpack? People died, I was like, that looks like suits. absolute yeah. lunacy. That does. Absolute yeah. carnage with people bailing left, right, and center. And then some ass that's been playing at 60 billion hours goes flying off into first place and thinks yeah. he's God's gift because he beat everybody <laughs> else. You know, it's the usual fare. But, it, you know, again, it always comes down to they've created, from what, from what I was reading, this massive game area that is encapsulated. They've taken like the the was it the topography from like many of the national parks in America, Bryce Canyon, you certainly Sequoia, Zion Canyon. I don't know where these places are, but they've taken all these places and they've merged them all, mashed them all together into this massive play area where you've got snow, you've got desert, you've got you know mountains with dirt tracks and different weather conditions and all that. You've got bikes, skis, snowboards, wingsuits, rocket wingsuits, all sorts of different types of those types of you know transportation there seems like a massive amount of fun to be had in this area that they have created where you can meet up with your friends say what does everybody fancy a wingsuit flight yeah let's go up to this place here go down there and everybody's bouncing off each other as they go flying down a mountainside just having a laugh and that's you know for me it brings back memories of my childhood just playing co-op games with my friends and having a laugh. It didn't have to have a serious storyline. It didn't need to have the best graphics of everything. It was just about the moments that you make amongst yourself when something stupid or something fun or something great happens and you talk mm. about it for days afterwards and you talk about it and years to come and you go, you remember when you did that? That was awesome, yeah, blah. And that's what this game says to me. This is what I think it, it will encapsulate. Um, so, yeah, very excited from what I saw. And it kind of jumped out. I mean, I was like, I really, really like the look of that. You know, so. Yeah, it's, it's that kind of, it's a kind of, it's a game you get in when the lad's coming over, you get some beers in and you're just like, it's just carnage. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that's your thing where you're like, if I get on a bike and you get on a jet powered wingsuit, can I beat you to the bottom of this hill? <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, you do stuff like that, you know. And uh, yeah. yeah, I think, I think it's a fun game. Yeah, I think we're, because I mean, they, they announced it was the one more thing, wasn't it, last year or the year yeah. before last, was it? Yeah. The year before yeah. last? Yeah, it might, it might it be. Two, yeah, it was 2000, last year. Yeah, 2019, wasn't it? 2019. Yeah. yeah. There wasn't yeah, one was, last year, was there? No, no, there wasn't, yeah. So it was, yeah, the one more thing. And obviously that was a bit early, but it looked quite fun then. And it's nice to see it kind of moved on a little bit further. And it actually looks like it's delivering on that original which very much a vertical slice that it was in 2019, you know, having this MMO environment that, um, you know, it, it could, yeah, it could well be really, really fun. But again, I think I'm sitting in the same place as you, Alan, that am I likely to buy it? Well, is it so? Pricing it, is the key thing there, isn't it? Pricing, is, I think, yeah, it's full price. I don't think it's one that I would get. It would be that, one that I would wait for sale. It's part um, of what we've been talking about tonight, isn't it? Because almost every other game that we will talk about tonight is Game Pass. Yeah. So when you have so much available to you, you have to make a really serious decision about how badly you want a game when you're being asked to pay £60 for mm. it. Is it going to be worth value value for money? And are you going to get the time out of it? Because why? Because yeah. I can just go and play Back for Blood because that's free. Mm. Well, not free, but it's on Game yeah. Pass and I don't have to pay another 60 quid yeah. for it. That's yeah. the issue. I mean, I, I particularly like the look of this game because it has mountain biking and that was always my thing. Mm. So First person as been, well. Yeah, there has not been a good mountain biking game in 
years. It was like no fear downhill mountain biking on the PlayStation One, I think, or maybe PlayStation. What about Descenders, mate? If you played Descenders, I have. It was all right. Nah. <laughs> average. Um, what I mean, this this kind of makes me think of it's like mountain biking, but Fall Guys style. <laughs> yeah, what it makes yes. me think of. Um, I don't know whether they announced whether it had like the split screen co op because I think, I like you know, a lot of you Not guys sure. said that. To me, this strikes me as if it's going to be good, it's going to be a good couch co op game. I meant to say that, Phil. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know whether it has that split screen. If it doesn't, then it's definitely a no no. If it does. Is very much going to depend on that price. If it's a sixty-pound price tag, then I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to wait until it's either on a really good deal, or you know, eventually it'll probably turn up in Game Pass if it's that popular. I think they're using good. that MMO tag, aren't they? Which mm. would suggest it probably won't have split screen. But who knows? We'll see. Mm. It doesn't appear. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. see. I mean, it'd be yeah. good if it did. Even if it was just two-player, that's enough that you can have a couple of beers and. Mm. You know, get the uh, get the old wingsuits out and see what. Uh, happens. You know what? That is the sad thing of like when I was so excited for online gaming to become a, the norm. You know, of Xbox Live and things like that. You never thought it would be the end of or the death of couch co op in so many titles. Mm. You know, yeah. and like you know, the, the fact that it was fought for to put it back into Halo was is, is proof of you know it's, it's so it's so sad because couch co op is one of those things that is so great. You know, Sometimes so many games really just leave, leave your house. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, right. So round to Mr. Rats to Tweets. Me. Hey. Game number three, uh, please, mate. Well, I'm gonna go back to uh Game Pass uh with a game that like I'd never seen anything of. I think it was a drop on this uh, E3 entirely, which was replaced. Um I saw this and just went, What's that? That looks awesome. Um, you know, uh if you're an old school gamer. Uh, I'm sure if I say another world or flashback to mm. any of us, lot, we all go, oh my God, yeah, another world flashback. Oh, oh well. Wow. Uh, it, it gave me like certain elements of that in terms of the, the way the game looked. Um, very you know, retro pixel art style, but there's definitely some modern twists on that. Mm. Um, I did a little bit of homework on it. You're apparently playing as a, a, an AI trapped in a human body called Reach, R-E-A-C-H. I'm not quite sure what it stands for. Um, yeah, and you, uh, you're sort of on a, a, mi a mission to solve some kind of mystery. And there's, yeah, combat, which is going to be shooting and hand-to-hand. -hand. I absolutely just love the aesthetic. Mm. I thought the platforming elements look cool. The fighting elements look cool. Just, I, I don't know, this game just just, just instantly hooked me. Like this moment here where that guy stepped out of the shadow, I was like, love the way they did that. Yeah. The way the camera's moving, all that kind of stuff. I was just like, yeah, more of this. This shot here as well. And the, yeah, it was, it was a real standout, definitely. Yeah. It, it, just, it just put me like really like, wow, look at this. And... Um, I, I, it feels fresh. It feels interesting. It's a Game Pass uh, day one as well. It's coming in 2020, uh, 2022. Yeah, 2022. Mm. Um, absolutely excited for this. Just instantly, like, everything about it looked great. I was just like, yep, I, I'll probably suck at it. It'll probably, like, make me, it'll drive me mad. I'll be super infuriated. <laughs> but I also can't wait to play it. That looked really good. Really, really there was, good. There was a game a couple of years ago, and I've completely forgotten what it was called. It was a very cyberpunk esque. Was it Last city or Lost yeah they city. showed it a few years back and i never saw it launch and i've been no it's, I've missed it. it's completely just gone out of my mind um what it was called but again it gave me a fit when i saw that i had exactly the same type of feelings it had that almost diorama type <sighs> look you know where you were it yeah. wasn't like you were looking into a 3d box and the things were happening yeah. inside it you know the depth of it was fantastic um and and this and it, yeah it definitely i mean i think when we were sat watching it we were all like oh yeah that looks really really smart yeah excited for that one yeah it gave me some real um really it gave me like initially real blade runner vibes mm. particularly when the title came up i was like oh i didn't i didn't know it was an ai in a human body that's such an interesting mm. twist actually now that mm. i know that i love that it's like it's probably the opposite way around to what they always do in the films isn't it mm. yeah which i think is such a great twist and like again i'm not a big fan of that kind of pixelist art style that's not normally my jazz i just sit there and like why didn't they just make it look sharper you know we've got the technology <laughs> but you know what like looking at that and that the way it's done with the pixel art but it's like that super smooth like lots of very modern feel art. yeah yeah i really like the look of that mm. i don't I like think pixel art but i like that whatever I think that, that was, is yeah. i like that well the pixel I, I love the fact that i was gonna i was gonna say and i meant to say earlier and you just remind me like i love the fact that they took pixel art styling and i played i recently played um uh oh what's the one with the i said about with the chompy monster thing 
the, the one that looks like carrion. You play, it's like carrion, where you play as basically the monster from the thing. It's the best way I can describe mm. you. Eat everything, and you can morph from that. That um, that whole game has very pixel art styling, but it has a very like everything's got very retro, very sort of paper movements. Whereas this felt like super slick and modern in terms of the animations and the and the lighting and the way that all worked. But yeah, it still had that really cool retro vibe to it. And I was like, I don't know what that is, but I, I think this game looks absolutely incredible, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. It's got it's like it's got that pacing, like the way when they do the actions, like you don't see every movement of the action, but you see just enough to make it look like you're moving really quickly and cool. And, like, <laughs> and you're some kind of absolute badass. They've got that just right. I don't know how long that took them to get the timing right and exactly which frames to use and not to, but I love it. What about you, Al? What did you think? Well, I mean, uh, I'm not really a retro gamer uh, normally, uh, especially the style. Um, but I, I, again, I've always said many, many times before, it's not about the graphics, it's about the gameplay. So, uh, uh, but I do like the, the graphics in this. I do like the aesthetic. I love the depth um, of every scene that we saw there. And as you said, the color and the lighting, it all looks absolutely uh, fantastic. Um, but it's, it's a kind of, a, it looks to be like a sideways scroller. And that's not really the kind of game that I generally tend to play. Mm. Um, uh, but upon saying that, the bits that really jumped out to me was the combat. The combat felt looked at like it was really solid and visceral and, you know, yeah. bang. When he takes that guy down, he just puts his foot into his back <laughs> and you hear the crack. And it's yeah. just like, whoa, that was intense. That's, well, then that's he proceeds really to just put the gun to his head yeah. as well. I was just and like, then, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, is that, is that how badass you feel? Because if that is how badass you feel, that adds real weight. That adds real, real, you know, substance to it. And therefore, you know, that that just, that does kind of appeal to me. That's something that I would be interested in trying. So I'm kind of divided on it. You know, it's not something I'm like, whoa, that looks amazing. And I'm really interested. But at the same time, there are elements of it that kind of went, you know what? This might be something that you might enjoy. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. One. Best thing about it, though, Alan, you can, you can try it. Do you know free. what? Really? Well, why is that, Chris? It's because of this wonderful thing called Game Pass. <laughs> it's on Game Pass. It's on Game Pass. <laughs> well, I mean, we called this the E3 show, but really it's just the Game Pass show, isn't it? <laughs> that was Microsoft's presentation, though, wasn't it? Wasn't it really there a was game it? out there where somebody where you have to take a shot every time they said Game Pass? I yeah, mean, you wouldn't have made it through. The, the, no. You wouldn't have made it through. 90 level. minutes of that. that. It's yeah. Hard, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, that game kind of... There was, there's a film that's really... It, it kind of reminds me of it's a film where a guy has like has an accident has an ai chip put in him to help him walk again and i yes. can't think of the name of it um, it's uh, upgrade is it upgrade, upgrade. It is that's upgrade. it that's a upgrade. good film yeah fantastic. i haven't watched it yet but it's been, it's been on my watch list for ages so i would it definitely out. recommend it it's yeah. it's a very good story and the action is just superb yeah. Super. There's a lot of stuff of, like that game is is portraying. Yeah. So stuff like I'll that. Have to, I'll have to check it out. Definitely. Very cool. Very cool. Brilliant. Right now, game number three for Mister Phil. Now I only get I only opted for three games, so I saved my best till last. And I'm pretty sure you guys know what it's going to be. Well, you should do because I'm. <laughs> Borza Horizon <laughs> Five, and this year we're going to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how they say it over there anyway. We're going to drink tequila and drive Ferraris and Lovely Broncos, because apparently we see. Uh, yes, I am oh. so excited for this. Yeah, it's in Mexico. There's going to be snow cover oh, mountains. Hold on, no, just a second, Phil. Just a second, Phil. I'm just going to say, I'm pretty sure we have got a viewer from Mexico. So I apologize for Phil's horrendous uh, interpretation of Mexico. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so growing 98, I believe it was. Um, yeah. Now, now, you know, apologies. <laughs> I'm very yeah. sorry. That was taken out of context. I'd love to visit Mexico and I've never been there. And now I'm going to in a video game. Thank you anyway. for your country's contribution to Forza Horizon. Keep digging out that hole, Phil. Keep digging, keep digging out the hole, mate. Go on. Back to my excitement about the game after my apology. I can write a written apology later, you know, like you do when you really pulls up. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be in Mexico. We're going to get snow-covered mountains. We're going to get volcanoes. There's going to be jungles. There's going to be sandy beaches. Oh, it looks so good. Um, the map apparently is going to be one and a half times bigger than the most recent Forza Horizon 4 set in England. That makes me very excited because that was pretty big anyway. Uh, there's going to be a whole new like events 
game tab thing where basically you can make your own mini games and your own races and you can set up your own like stunts and things you know they kind of added it in with i think it was the horizon like super sevens i think they called it at the end where you could set up like mm. a where you had to race and hit a certain speed at a thing or you had to jump and get a certain score it's kind of like that but next level basically um performance wise so they're saying there's going to be ray tracing but from what we can tell it's probably only going to be in the forza vista mode which is like the thing where you press x in the garage and you pan around the car or uh, potentially when you're doing the screenshot mode as well it might may activate then i'm not 100 percent on that they were a little dicey on the uh the specifics there but they have said there is going to be a 4k 30 quality mode so potentially maybe the ray tracing is activated in that. And then there will be a 4K60 performance mode, which I'm sure will look amazeballs. Uh, so can't wait for that. And it's going to be released on the 9th of November into Game Pass. Hey. Or if you're a complete Muppet, you can play $54.99 for the standard edition and $84.99 for the ultimate edition. <laughs> and there will be some DLC and there'll be a Forza VIP pass. What I'm probably going to do is get it on Game Pass and just pay the extra to get upgrade to the Ultimate Edition, which was I think about fifteen pound last time. Well, actually, last time, if you're an ex, if you were a Game Pass Ultimate subscriber, you got the Ultimate Edition, same as you did with Gears Five. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mm. see, they Game Pass Ultimate wasn't available when Forza Horizon Four launched initially, though. I don't think was it. It was, yeah. That's why I've got the Ultimate Edition. Yeah, I'm just a muppet then because I paid. Yeah. <laughs> so really, the only mug here is me. No but one you cares because we all get to Forza Horizon, Horizon Five. Let's, Let's face it, Phil. What you were, what you were, was supporting game development, and that's exactly. you know, just as important. I mean, Thank you could have just supported it by uh, downloading the Ultimate Edition on yeah. Game Pass. But I you mean, know. he's a Muppet. Let's be yeah. honest. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know what? Can we like scroll back to that shot with like the mountains and the desert? You know, where like the the shadows were on there. Oh, that looks so good. Uh, can we, can we scroll? Can, is that scroll back to where before you'd insulted our Mexican viewer and, uh, and everyone in Mexico? <laughs> Let's move. Let's let it go. Back. You feel that Forza strongly, Forza Rewind. Rally. Forza Rewind. <laughs> you know what, you feel that as far as as far as Forza is concerned, I'm already sold. I've yeah, been playing what, since what, Forza Three. As far as you know, a game that I play with you guys and have great fun, and then you all go off and play something else. They carry on playing because I want to get all the cars and I want to do that. It, it's been a beautiful game uh, for the last two Forzas. Forza 4 was just Ever since absolute, the first one, yeah, it's been amazing. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. You know, the engine they use, the, the talent they have, the graphics are always exemplary. And mm. if anything, I thought that number four with some of those screenshots that we saw when it the trailer for that looked almost real. And I didn't think they could surpass that. And they have done oh. those. The, the graphics and the visuals in that trailer are simply mind-blowing how good they look. It is absolutely immense, almost photorealistic. In fact, mm. I was saying to you, wasn't I, Craig, the other night, I was saying when you when I was watching the trailer and they were talking about, oh, we took like, you know, 120 different pictures of the sky for different <laughs> colours and different textures. That's not what the guy sounded like. That's what I said. No, the yeah. they said no, they recorded it, it. They said they recorded the full night cycle on yeah, a 16K exactly. camera is what they but said. When he was so talking... When he was talking, they were panning across the canyon, and I'm think I'm actually thinking they're showing me the actual canyon where they were taking the screenshots <laughs> yeah. for the stuff, and then it pans down, and the cars in the game, which are really amazing, but you can still tell they're not real, yeah, suddenly yeah. drive across the canyon. You're like, no, oh my God, it's not real. It's actually the game. And it's, it's just yeah. phenomenal. It's mind-blowing. And I will, of course, be playing this game. I'll be playing it for hundreds and hundreds of hours, like I have done number four and number three. It's a, it's a given. I'm sold. Mm. But wow. Yeah. My, wow. my, um, my go-to phrase whilst watching that game was, oh, my God, look at that. Oh, my God, look at that. Oh, my God, look at that. That was pretty much what I did the whole way through. It just, it was absolutely stunning. I think it's the most incredible-looking game we've seen mm to date and but the fact that it's in a massive open world as well the level of detail or something that you pointed out um thunderlips when they were going along the the yeah. desert canyon at the top of the mountain and all the rocks started to displace Rock as they came through as well. yeah, yeah. yeah it was just yeah it's, absolutely it's, fantastic I think, I think all the forts of games are all stunning looking games um and they've all been technical showcases but like the last three have been just so pretty mm. and this just raises that bar which you didn't think could go really any higher yeah. and you're suddenly just like just look at it like just just yeah. look at it 
And it is like, I was like, just completely like, I will play it. I've never been a hardcore racing game person. I tend to dip in and out quite casually. Uh, I say I always miss Project Gotham because it was so casual friendly. And um, this is as close as you can get to Project Gotham in a modern racer. And I just, I, I love what I do with, with Forza Horizon games. I just hope we get the, the Warthog back in this one to <laughs> bomb around in Mexico in. I'm so it's, it's, just... it's so good. It's so but good. I have to say, it's not just the visuals. What they also have right oh, is yeah. the content. Yeah. That it is the perfect, again, it is the perfect playground for jumping in with your mates and you just want to gas around. That They've got yeah. everything absolutely finely tuned over the last couple of day, a uh, couple of games where there are so many activities, so many things to do. You open up that map at one point and you're just like, oh, yep. I don't, yeah. it's just icons mm. everywhere. There's everywhere. finally a reason to use the filter button in a game yeah. for the map. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> totally so yeah. it's like it's not just that it looks amazing it's the fact they've got the gameplay down pat they've made it so easy for you to play with your friends it's literally well they well, were was that, that was the other thing as well in the, in the trailer they were talking about how everything was a real driver mm. yeah and i was just yeah. like this is like this is getting nuts you know and like the, like you said the scope of it and like they're playing with your friends and the way well, it was inviting people about, into events. Oh, just yeah. Like, well, this is the thing. What they were talking about was, and this is something I was saying to Phil. You know, I should, I want to have the option that when I'm sat there playing and Craig comes online, and without even needing to be told, it automatically puts him into the same instance that I'm playing mm -hmm. in and te notifies me without us having to join a lobby and jump in mm -hmm. together. And that seemed to me what they were saying. And that is just perfect because if i have people i want to play with they're already on my friends list when they come on the game i don't want to be going out of the experience and just say like, yeah i'm in jump in the party boom there you go you're off no mm. mess because it, it, if you're in the same map together it doesn't mean you have to do the same thing so if no, you're just no. playing on your own it doesn't matter if you're just in the same zooming past each other on the motorway <laughs> so, oh, yeah. well, <laughs> it's so it was a really impressive show for them though like yeah. really impressive and i did i you know it would be impressive well, I didn't think it'd be that impressive, truthfully. Like that, really. Like, there's. I look forward to many more instances of the hand and flick. Yeah. <laughs> For reference, that's a little cheeky move that Phil does on his racing games that he swears is a legitimate move, which he nudges another car who's on. Uh, we calls it the inside, nudges another car, and uses them as a bumper to get round a corner. Uh, that's the hand and flick. <laughs> we always give Phil grief for it. <laughs> I mean, usually the car used for said manoeuvre ends up in the hedge, so that's yeah. probably... I've been that it. car many, so many, many, you, many times. What you mean it's is you that... compensate for your bad driving by making others suffer. Nice one, Phil. Yeah, he's actually had various people we play Forza with remove him from their friends list so they don't have to drive against his driver tar because he did it so much, his driver tar learned to do it. <laughs> that's how much he did it. I remember driving down actually, a straight on Forza Motorsport 5... Coming down into cool. the corner and Phil's driver tire literally T-boned me into the side, <laughs> sent me flying off the track and him sailed around the corner. Actually, I believe the reason Bruce removed me was he said he couldn't beat my driver tire, not oh, because okay. of the Hunden flick specifically, <laughs> okay? And to be fair, Tony threatened to fire me when I gave him a nudge on the back bumper because I couldn't quite get past him because he was a little bit too fast, but not fast enough. So I'll just give him a bit of a nudge to push him wide. Uh, he was spitting. <laughs> he would speak to me the next day at work, would he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, the driver yeah. tars are just yet another part of that game that is so well done. Yeah. So definitely, it's a definitely. Brilliant, brilliant game, isn't it? Brilliant. Yeah, looking or in the case of mine, driver tard. <laughs> <laughs> and again, uh, well done, Phil. Uh, sorry about that, everybody. Um, <laughs> the man with no filter. Um <laughs> So, uh, it's a good job we my... don't have sponsorship, isn't it? It really is. I mean, we would lose it very quickly. Um, we'd lose it or Phil, one of the two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, on to my final game um, for this E3. And, I mean, it's a bit of an outlier for me because I don't think anybody knew that I was excited for this game. Um, it just sort of kind of came a bit out of left field. Pie animals, wasn't it? Pie. Um, oh, no, it's not pie animals. Oh, okay. um, it was a bit of Halo Infinite, <laughs> what is what it was. Is this actually on? I don't remember this. <laughs> so, Halo Infinite, yeah. This isn't actually the trailer we're showing here that was on... Um, at the show uh, it was a um, it was one that was slightly afterwards um, around the multiplayer um, but it looks uh, they've really redeemed themselves from the last show that they did around the launch of the Xbox uh, Series X um, announcement 
where it came out and the game clearly wasn't finished. It got loads and loads of grief for Craig the the Grunt or whatever his name was. That looked really unfinished. Brute. Low Craig the Brute. The brute, sorry, not the Grunt, the Brute. Um, and um, yeah, it, it, I mean, it looked okay, but it didn't look great. So they released another bit of campaign trailer, which gave us a bit of a bit of story meat, which looks very much like they're almost resetting Cortana back from what they did with Halo 5. Um, so we'll, we'll see what's happening there. But you could see the ray trust, you could see the reflections in Chief's visor, which has always been something we've always wanted. Really great reflections in his visor. And him just flying through um, flying through space. And big weapons and stuff. It was oh. absolutely fantastic. Badass Chief. Um, and then we've seen a load around the Halo multiplayer, uh, which is going to be free, which is fantastic news. Mm. Yes, Halo is coming. Halo Infinite is coming to Game Pass. Great, you know we knew that was going to happen. Yes, it is. But with the multiplayer being free across consoles and across PC, this is going to give such a vast player base for what is i mean the original core multiplayer shooter you know it's what started it all off really you know particularly on consoles you had you know halo 1 doing it local and then halo 2 online absolutely just it was insane halo 3 one of the biggest launches ever this stuff was amazing um, and what 343 three industries have done is they've they've kind of gone back to very much capturing the essence of what made halo great you know, so they've, they've really looked at what Halo 2 and Halo 3 did, um, and they've designed it to kind of be a celebration of all those previous Halos as well. So one of the, some of the things they looked at, just taking some clip bits out of this uh, video here, uh, is that uh, all the arena matches that have done, they, they just looked into them and realised they were all about being fair and balanced starts. That's always what Halo was. You've got, there's nobody has an upper hand because you're starting on a particular side of the map. There's none of that kind of stuff. Um, and once you've got that initial start, you're then um, moving off and you're scavenging. You know, you're going off and you're trying to find um, the shotgun or you're trying to find the sniper off or those powerful weapons. So they've kind of moved, very much kind of harped on that as well. Equipment's come back as well, but they've kind of changed it up to kind of make it a bit more modern because we know Halo does need to move forward, um, but just it needs to stay with its roots. So what they've done with things like the overshield and the cloak, when you pick those up now, they sit in your inventory. So you don't use them immediately as soon as you collect them. So you choose when you want to put that overshield on. So you can carry it for a bit and whack it on when you jump into uh, combat. But equally, if you get um, shot and killed, you'll drop your equipment. Yeah, so somebody else can then pick it up, which is yeah, which is pretty interesting as well. Um, there's uh, also a new vehicle, so a new version of the Warthog, um, which is uh, going to have like a, a bit of a storage compartment on it as well, so you can kind of carry power weapons, or you can put the flag or the oddball, something like that, on the back of it if you're doing big team battles. Um, and there's also a personal AI with uh, full loads loads of customization you can have your own voice and things like that that is solely for your multiplayer character again it's about kind of getting a bit of an individual um, identity to your particular spartan there's also battle pass system coming in but they've changed it up slightly different from what a lot of the battle passes out there at the moment things like your destiny or your, your fortnite so your battle passes have no time limit on them you can buy your battle pass and you can complete it within your own time equally if it was a year down the line you could come in and pick up the first battle pass if you felt like you wanted a particular armor set so they've tried to make it so they've tried to remove that fomo because that then effectively you've got a battle pass and you're going i need to play this game every day for the next three weeks or whatever to get this piece or i'm going to lose it um which it's nice to have that flexibility and that choice to do what you want when you want it um and uh, they've also another little thing they're actually adding bots in as well so they're doing a full training suite so there's people out there, might be new players, might be younger players, could be PC players who've never tried Halo before. So there's a full arena that you can add bots in and they're going to teach you everything about Halo. Because there's lots of things that you talk about within Halo that you just, you know, assume, you know, you say overshield, you say the cloak, whatever it might be that, that, that but you say oddball, you assume people are going to know what it is. But there are people out there who don't know what these things are. So it's to kind of get people invested in that multiplayer. So I think all in all, it really redeemed itself on the last time we saw it. 
and it's oh, I'm so hyped for it. The only downside is we didn't get a firm date. They're still saying holiday 2021. Um, you know, I, I'm sure, uh, please, I'm sure that it's going to be um, all running fine for a, a release date back then. I'd imagine it's potentially a marketing thing that they're holding it back for. Um, but it looks like uh, Joseph Staten has has uh, potentially made a few um, positive impacts, particularly on the multiplayer side. Um, so yeah, I am pumped for that one what do you boys say what do you what do you say chris is it one that's tickled you um <laughs> yeah uh, um, so uh I, I i love the look of the new multiplayer i've got i've gone off halo multiplayer over the past few incarnations mm. just it's just started to drift away from being halo for me um like back way back in the day on og xbox like i played the absolute behind out of halo um i loved it and like yeah, you were saying about like things people don't necessarily get about Halo. I think if you're a new player and you didn't understand, say, the one-hit mechanic in Halo, which is mm. if you're behind someone, you melee them, they're dead. You mm. know, um, and that, that's that's one of those things that's such a great mechanic that you can totally get the upper hand on someone once you know if if you just maneuver correctly. Uh, you know, they have the best weapon in the game if you maneuver correctly and you get behind them. Bye bye, birds are. You know, it's like mm. that's the end of it. <laughs> um, it yeah, you know, it's a, a great story. I always used to tell about like a. Uh, I, I never would have said I was a great Halo player, but I was certainly one of the better among my friend group. And there was a night we were playing it, four of us on Hang'em High. I was just dominating from up high with the sniper rifle, just zapping people off, like, you know, like taking names and switching to the pistol and one shotting people in the head. And I was like having free reign, just minding my own business. Next thing I know, I'm just like, oh, what? Hey, what am I doing? What? And it's just my mate Scott had managed to sneak up behind me and go, dunk, and just you know, clock me in the back of the head. And I was just like, you son of a... It was the most hilarious <laughs> thing. Mm. And it's like one of those Halo moments, which I'll, I'll you know, never forget. And then like, I'm hoping we get the return of Griff Ball as well with the Grav Hammers. I love a bit of Griff Ball. Um, but yeah, like everything just... it's the, the I said it from the word go when we saw the first Infinite trailer before they delayed it. And I'm saying it again. This feels more like Halo than the last two Halo games. And that's mm. the thing that makes me the happiest is that Halo's getting back to being Halo and not trying to pretend to be COD or, you know, something else. It just wants to be Halo. I'm really happy that so far there's no Battle Royale that everyone was expecting. Whilst I think it could have been fun, equally, you know, I don't think Halo needs a Battle Royale. Halo needs to just be really good at being Halo and people mm. will play it. You know, um, and I'm, I'm super excited for it. You know, I'm, I'm just think I think it's going to be great. I'm just absolutely pumped. Everything about it, the cam the campaign stuff. Oh my god, I was like, I'm like, I, I replayed the end of Halo Five, no four the other day, and I'd forgotten how like a, an absolute gut punch the end of Halo Four was emotionally. And I was like, I'm not ready for, for Halo more hate more of that. I can't do it. And then like that cutscene, I was like, having just watched yeah, the point where Cortana basically says goodbye to you like yeah you know, a few days prior see mm. this new ai i was like what's going on with cortana you can't do this to me this isn't cool <laughs> like, you know so yeah i'm super super excited to get back into halo and and, and you know reconnect with this story so super super excited nice mr mcqueen well halo has a very special place in my heart as uh, and, and it's halo 3 really where my fondest memories lay because that's where um, uh, my son first beat me at a computer game. Took him a few years, but um, eventually it was at that point I said I wouldn't play with him anymore when he beat me. But you know, before <laughs> that, I was teaching him important life lessons um, about uh, about you know sometimes you have to take your losses until the point that he started beating me. But no, some very fond memories. Um, but similar to Chris, I've kind of fallen out of love with Halo over the you know, four and five, it, it stops feeling quite like Halo. The campaigns are always entertaining. I have to say five, less so than, than even the other ones felt like Halo. We played that not that long ago, and it just, mm. it just, it, it feels like an add-on rather than a main story. The Master Chief isn't in it enough. You're not the yeah. Master Chief enough. It isn't Halo. Halo is Master Chief. Even number two, where you played as the Arbiter as well, it was still, you know, there was still, tons of the master chief with a bit of arbiter thrown in you know it's it, it it just it's kind of lost that for me and this is the first time this is the first trailer for halo that has actually left me hugely excited um i think mainly the multiplayer but also the campaign as well the campaign looks fantastic but the multiplayer just it just feel it, everything i'm looking at says halo 3 
the way that it moves, yeah. the way that it plays, the way that the, everything in it, Absolutely. it looks like a modern update of Halo 3. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that, to me, makes me hugely excited. I, I just, I can't, I've already been texting my son Alex saying, "Man, here's the video. We need to, we need to hit this up when it's out because it is just, it's going to be a trip down memory lane as far as I'm concerned." Tell you I'll what, still, we'll have to try and get, we'll get uh, still, me and Ryan on yeah, versus yeah. you and you and Alex. That'd be good and, fun. Father and, and son versus father and son. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I mean, I'm not sure who'd be the who who would win or lose, but I tell you what, I think you and me will have the lower scores, Craig. I think you might be right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, super pumped um, all of a sudden for this after that trailer. Really am. Mm. Mr. Phil. It's Halo. Yeah. I'm sure it will be awesome. I mean, I'm a little bit different to you guys. Like, you know, I, I love Halo 3, but my favourite Halo game is Halo Reach. Mm. And that was because oh. they introduced like that Spartan customization in there. Because you see, for me, I'm, it didn't bother me that 117 John wasn't in it. Like, you know, I'm kind of like, let the guy take a break, man. He's done like four <laughs> games, five games. You know, he saved the world so many times. Like, can't they just roll the Mark Spartan Six off of the off of the line, and you know, and you customize that dude, and then you send him in to save the world? Heathen, you know? Phil. Halo, Halo a break, man. Halo is the Master Chief. Master Chief. Is <laughs> I know Halo. that's the thing. Halo is the Master Chief, and almost like I wish that wasn't the case. I'd like. I'm losing friends here. I can see Craig's about to drive around my house and beat me over the head. <laughs> <laughs> it's like having a splinter cell without Michael Ironside in it. We know mm. it doesn't work. That's true. They did that and they tried it and it didn't work. Like I said, <laughs> I, it's going to be amazing. You know, the multiplayer looks great. The whole Spartan customization for the multiplayer, I'm very excited with. I will spend <laughs> a lot of time playing that and tweaking and making my Spartan look badass and having horrendous kill deaths. So it will take me 10 times as long to get to the point where I can unlock the bit of armor that I want. You're right, Craig. You made your point. So yes, I, I'm excited for the multiplayer, uh, particularly because it's the most balanced. Like the thing with Halo multiplayer is, whenever you get killed in Halo multiplayer, it's just because the other person was better than you. It wasn't lag, mm. ping, or anything else. They were just better than you. You just sucked. <laughs> it's humbling. It's humbling. Yeah, Not when so you play Craig he... because it's just horrible. When <laughs> just so smug when he wins. So smug. Nah. The, um, yeah. But I, I mean, a huge I, amount of customization must be really exciting for you then, because it's this, you know, yeah, yeah, it looks, nice like that little video you put on there. I was like, oh yes, mm. that excites me. I mean, like, to be fair, I do want to see the story. I do want to find out what's happened to Cortana. Like, you know, if I'm having to play a Halo game, oh well, you know, what a shame. It's a Halo game. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I can't wait to see what they've done with the story. You know, Halo Five, like we've all kind of alluded to, is the story was a little bit lackluster particularly the end of it, you know, it started off really strong with those fantastic intros in the first two levels, and then it kind of... The biggest problem with Halo 5 was the boss fights. Like, yeah. It's like, mm. sorry, the boss fight, which they just repeated ad nauseum, you mm. know, it was just yeah, like... the same dude, yeah, the same... Yeah, it was, Guardian, it was so yeah. tedious, and and then, like, like Alan said, like, there wasn't enough Master Chief in it, and it's not that a Halo game has to have the Master Chief, but when you're playing the Master Chief story, and for two-thirds of the game, you're not playing as the Master Chief... There's a problem with that. And yeah. and the other problem with that is the characters they replaced the Master Chief with in Halo 5 weren't really that interesting. That's the other problem, you know. Um, Halo 5 was just a misstep. Apart from Buck. We like yeah, that. well, that's, that's just Nathan Fillion. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think his character was particularly interesting, but it's just Nathan Fillion. Yeah, so yeah, that's, no, you're right. right. Yeah, it was <laughs> just, it was Nathan Fillion. <laughs> yeah, <that's the laughs> any any game that has Nathan Fillion is yeah. better because of it. Mm. Well, you know, but he but he, he was more interesting as a, as a Spartan character because he had the history from ODST. And, oh, anyway, yeah, we can go on and on, but that's not the point. The point is though, like I want to see that Chief story, and I'm hoping that they've, they've, you know, it looks like they've really learned their lesson from Halo Five, and they've, and I love the fact they look, they've taken on the community feedback. It just looks great. I can't wait for it to be holiday 2021. I am so excited for Infinite. It's just. I mean, if you had, if I hadn't known you would definitely pick Infinite, it would have absolutely been in my three <laughs> games. Or I was, I wanted because oh my god, that looked good. Yeah. Like just yes, yeah. come on, more awesome of it. stuff. And I think that is a fantastic place to finish on with the Master Chief. So, 
Thank you very much if you've managed to make it this far, all hour and 45 minutes of us rambling on about what we've seen at E3. Um, but it'd be great to know what your favourites have been. You know, you obviously you can join into our um, Discord channel if you like. You can contact us on uh, Unnamed Games Podcast We uh, the for Twitter, should I say. And actually, Mr. Ratley, we have another social media channel now, don't we? Yeah, we have, and I've completely forgotten what I set up the uh, handle to be. Uh, I should have really had this to hand, <laughs> shouldn't I? You know, in my... Again, we come back to that point of our, our superb planning here for yeah. uh, things. Well, we we've are actually on now Instagram joined Instagram. Yes, is what I was going to say to help we, fill the gap there. <laughs> yeah, and we are just the underscore unnamed underscore games underscore podcast. So there you go. That's us. There you go. There you go. We'll put yeah, it in the. So... We'll put a link, won't we, Craig? We'll put a link yes. in the description <laughs> so people can click that link and follow us. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, feel free yes. To drop us any questions, or mm. if you just want to make comments, or observe mm. how great Phil ha Phil's hair looks, mm -hmm. you know, any of the above. Say please. hello, or how I'm just rocking my space top gun, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> only two of us out there at the moment. Obviously, because I've alienated the entire of Mexico and that's, at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> two, <laughs> two, 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 top, two uh, space top guns are enough. I'm really yes. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll on that note that. Um, it will be a uh, goodbye from me it's also a goodbye from Phil so long goodbye from Chris goodbye one and all and a goodbye from Alan ciao take care bye bye